I think Rob saw my Porsche video doing donuts because he, so he, he jumped one. Jumped one. We, we could jump yours. Well, you know what? We can't because the ramps are all the, – the ra- aren't the ramps all kind of defunct now that you have uh, a place to park submarines? Yeah, but we're, we're bulldozing that. You're gonna, are you gonna are you gonna completely bulldoze it? You know, John. You are wasting an opportunity, right? You know that, right? What will give it to me? What do we got? You just dug a huge hole. It's sixty five feet deep. Yeah, you just dug a huge hole. Um, now you have a place where you could put a missile silo. <laughs> have you seen? Are you watching Bunker Living? Yeah. It is badass, but the problem is it's in wherever it's at. Well, yeah, they're they're obviously in places where there's no work and nothing to do because they're in the middle of nowhere. But they are also still targets. Sure, of course, they're but, still they're. But still, I mean, where in the United States is not a target? Well, what what I'm saying is what I'm saying is all ICBM all ICBM locations right in the United States, every single one of them. They're not. It's not like. They're going to drop a nuclear bomb. They're going to drop a, a bomb on Idaho. Those silos are specifically target. Those silos specifically get their own bomb. And secondary targeting, those silos get another bomb. So not you're, only, not, you're not walking out of that motherfucker. Not only that, there's no internet in those places, right? It's all, it was all programmed... 1950s and 60s old style, right? So there's like some rotary shit and they dial in the number and then they lock it down. All the people that knew how to change all the coordinates, they're all dead. Like there's just still, there's still a dude that just, the dead guy's still in the corner. The new guy just shows up to work and he gets the fucking, he gets the transmission and pushes the button. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, I think they're cool. I'd love to live in one, but the reality is... We could go... Uh, there's a couple Airbnbs. We could go rent one and see what it's really all about. I mean, I, I mean, we see it, but I haven't yeah. actually been, been in one. one. Yeah. Um, but that dude... What's that dude? He's friends with um, Matt Kirkature or, or uh, Off the Ranch. Uh-huh. They're, they're boys, I guess. But he, this dude has another big YouTube channel, but his newer channel is The Bunker Live. His Instagram's pretty good, too. And then DJI is giving him drones and shit, and they're... It's it's pretty neat. Like they have pumped the water out of there and cut a bunch of stuff out. Hey, before we get too deep, I have a I have a uh, fan mail. I have a fan mail. I have a question I have to answer from uh, Daft Boy McCoy. Where did you get that from? Just it showed up on your phone. Yeah, just sent to my phone. Daft Boy McCoy. Okay. Uh, and he wanted to know why I hate Glock so much, and I I feel like I need to correct something, right? I feel like I need to correct, let's get this out in the air, that I don't hate Glocks. I mean, the truth of the matter is, unlike all you people out there on the internet, I love all guns. All guns. You could bring me a gun that shoots backwards, and I love all guns. (laughs) Okay, I love all guns. All guns need to be saved, and if you have a gun in your basement that you don't shoot anymore, and you want it to go to a good place, look me up. Uh, Gun museum. uh, Even if they don't work, he'll make a throne out of it. I will. I've got... I've got some guns that'll never fire again because I like to save guns. Um, yeah, so it's why, not, do, why won't they fire again? What happened? Because I just don't want to put the time and effort into getting them operational. It's just why not, are they not operational? Uh, well, one of them is a feeding tube that the it's a, a really old twenty two. The feeding tube you can't find it anymore, and just like I mean I could. Ma- it's a tube magazine. And yeah, a tube bent. magazine yeah. and stuff. So. Um, so I just want to clear the air about the Glock. The, I, it's not that I, I don't hate Glocks. I love Glocks. But the reality of a Glock is, Glock is the pet rock of this generation, right? Everybody had a pet rock. Everybody loved pet rocks. Did you ever see a pet rock in I a did. toy store? I remember in yeah, Toys R Us. In Toys R Us, you yeah. could get a fucking pet rock. And I think the reality of it is, the reality of it is the pet rock and everybody loved it. It's kind of the same thing with the Glock. If you put googly eyes on the Glock... You just raised the value of it. Do you know what the worst thing about um, the apocalypse is going to be? What? You won't be able to get googly eyes anymore. That is true. That is true. But I mean, if you already have googly eyes on your Glock, you could call it a Glorp and, <laughs> you know, take it places with you. And then when you're really excited, you could push uh, bullets out through the front of the Glork hole. I mean, it, it could be... Where would you, where would your googly eyes go on the clock? You know, I, I was trying to think about that. And I'd, I, put them, I'd put them on the side of the front of the slide. 
So when somebody's looking at it, they can see the googly eyes from the sides? Yeah, maybe. That might work, too. And if you put them high enough, the barrel would look like a mouth. Yeah, I think so. You'd have to get a holster, though, because your holster oh, would, yeah. would knock the googly eyes off. Would knock it. I guarantee you we know somebody who could custom make a holster that would... For googly eyes? That would accept the googly eyes. Do you... But, um? <laughs> I can't even remember what I was going to say. <laughs> How did that person get a hold of you? Just It just came up on my phone. I don't, I, I mean, do you want me to log you must in? Be, it must you, be somebody. Do you want me to log you into the YouTube channel so you can comment? I mean, I don't, I wouldn't it comment. It would be a that. fucking all day. Yeah, thing. I don't have, I, don't I have, had to, I had to log myself out of it. I don't have time. I mean, I, <laughs> I know everybody would be like, Skelly, where do you get your googly eyes? Um, where's your googly eyes on your Glock? I heard, I heard a rumor, and I'm sure this isn't supposed to be out there. I heard a rumor Glock actually made you a full metal Glock. I mean, Glock. If you're thinking about if you're thinking about you know making a full metal gun for me, don't do it. It's still going to be ugly. <laughs> it's still going to be ugly. The grip angle's still going to suck, and it's probably going to shoot brass straight up in the air and not really work that well. So Lisa, don't even Lisa's don't do it. Not shooting straight. Back I mean, you, you. know, because if, if I want uh, <laughs> if I want a full metal gun. High Point already offers that. I don't need Glock to custom make me a uh, a full metal gun. High Point's already got those in the wings. As a matter of fact, they just came out with their 10 millimeter, the Yeet Yeet. So, Is that real? Yeah, it's real. It's a real. Who, it's a, who makes that? High, High Point. Point. has a gun. They actually called one a Yeet Cannon? Uh, I don't know if it actually says Yeet Cannon on it, but they are at least advertising it as the Yeet Cannon. Do you think when they ran that poll... Like years ago, you were still working years ago, right? They ran that poll for their new model, and yeet yeet was what yeah. yeet cannons, yeah. what everybody well, voted on. Do you think they were like, oh shit? Hundred percent, they were. Do you notice? Like, I used to ask people to get to get traffic on social media. I would ask people's opinions. We don't ever do that shit anymore because, <laughs> hey, what do you what do you think? There's always going to be some asshole that says some silly shit, and because he does it, a bunch of other people. And they, it's psychological, right? If, if you ask people's opinion on a piece of gear, the guys who opinion you take or they think you took it, right? Because we've already got the fucking thing made before we asked yeah. you. Like, but the guys that align with what you built, they're going to buy it. But the other guys that said they wanted something else, they're just going to dig their heels in and they're not going to buy it and because they, they feel wronged by you. But they weren't going to buy it anyway. Correct. Well, a few of them might have. They weren't going to buy it anyway. So. Yeah. Okay, um, so. But I, I, got a, I got another high point thing that most people don't know. Um, you know, so the yeet cannon, so they, they did that thing where they're like, you can name the next thing. And everybody was like the yeet yeet. And high point was like, yeah, no, the next gun is not going to be yeet yeet. And they released a nine millimeter or something like that. And they did not do it. You can, all you HK fans, you can 100% thank high point for what, for what transpired because of that. HK came out and said, if you don't name the next, I saw it. We will name the the uh, Mark Twenty Three the Yeet Yeet Cannon and re-release it. Holy shit! There really is a it's, it's a Yeet Yeet Cannon G One. It's the Yeet Cannon G One on HighPoint.com. It's and funny. It's funny that HK said that because HK seems like they fucking hate their customers. HK does hate their customers. I am sure that that was um, HK. That was like HK USA. It was probably HK's. Social media model. Yeah, maybe social media. That, like HK didn't even know it happened because it wasn't in HK. It was like you dirty civilians. You can't have four sixteens. Yes, I mean it's the but the the reason why the Mark Twenty Three has been re released was because of the interaction that they had with High Point. Is that true? It's one hundred percent true. So is the Mark? It's a Mark Twenty Three mod. Mark one mod zero, or it's like the uh, it's, actual. It's the original Mark Twenty. Comes yeah. with twelve round mags, threaded barrel, uh, and everything. I don't know if it comes with 12 round max because you know how HK is, uh, you know, they're, they're actually anti-gun. Um, it might still come with 10 round max, but the gun is exactly the same. It has all the cutoff switches and everything. I heard HK was owned by Klaus Schwab. It's possible. I mean, would you, would, if somebody told you that, would you fucking no, doubt it? I would. I mean, it's possible. I mean, why not? Coolest- rich people, rich, here's the thing. Rich people, when, when a rich person says, I don't like pollution or I don't like they mean on their private yeah, I island. love it's fine on it's fine on you on you motherfuckers. I love batteries they're fucking lying they're 100% lying yeah because you guys might not know this but all those dudes that go to Davos 
they don't just take a private jet there. Most of them fly with two jets. Some of them fly with three jets in case somebody tries to shoot one of their jets down. They also take a jet and they pre-run two different courses to see where the air turbulence is because they don't want their drink spilled. Yeah. Like, look that shit up. That's not some bullshit I made up. I did make up all the HK stuff. I didn't. All that HK stuff is true. Isn't it true that um, HK copied the 416 from High Point? I'm, uh, no, that is not true. Is it true that High Point made a belt fed? That's not true. High Point designed the 416 for hk specifically the only thing hk this is true this is true the only oh, shit you got a lot of material right now the only the only thing hk changed in the high point design was you know high point loves pop metal you know they love that they love that pop metal uh hk went with aluminum so technically the hk version of the 416 is really not as good as the original high point design what is pot metal um, it's like you take a bunch of metal and you heat it up. I'm going to, if I was going to make it, I'd do it out of pig iron. I mean, it's pretty close to the same thing. You know what pig, pig iron, iron is? It's pretty close to the same thing. Pig iron is very, very heavy. It's what old dumbbells were made of. My boy Mike collects those. And I'm, he's like, I'm like, what are you doing with all these old dumbbells? He's like, what do you think that weighs? I'm like, 10 pounds? He's like, try to pick it up. They are so fucking heavy. And then when we toured, uh, when we went to, um, Lodge, they use a pig iron recipe, the dude that started making the first pans. But uh, when you launch your gun company, you're going to use my guy over at Shoot Steel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would love to use Shoot Steel. Because I mean, he, I have all their targets. He. Not only that, you might not know, he started a pan company. Dish it, oh, really? Like, yeah, like kitchen cook pans for high-end chefs. Yeah. Are they, are they bulletproof? The pans are not bulletproof. Come on, man! Make me a make me a cast iron skillet that will deflect a nine millimeter. Don't you want it to be instead of that? Well, I think would a cast iron skillet not deflect a nine millimeter? I don't know. No, I think I think because it's cast iron that it would crack. It. What about um? Wouldn't you rather have like a pancake griddle? So when the ninjas come in, you just like. Whoo. I mean, it would a pancake griddle would be better, but I think it might be heavy. Would you put it over your head or your junk? My junk. Because you got shot in the junk. Yeah, I could survive. Want to live. I mean, well, the reality is I could survive a head wound. I couldn't survive a junk wound. Is it, I thought you did survive a head wound. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I can survive a head wound, have you but been, the junk? Have you been shot no. in the head? No, I have not been shot in the head. Did you get concussed in the head? I got concussed in the head. Yeah. I, got blown it, I got bloated up. You want to tell that story? No, I thought we were going to tell the sprinkler story. I like that story better. Well, you're still... T oh, you're not getting out of this, motherfucker. Oh, tell I, the... I like tell the, the okay, story. tell the... Tell, Reason 1,027 why you don't want a Malinois. Yeah, reason 1,027 why you don't want a Malinois. We have I, don't, a, I don't know what may, ever made him think he needed a Malinois. Because uh, it was it's the cool dog, right? Everybody had to have the cool dog, and everybody thinks, oh, that's the cool dog. The police use it. Well, I mean, it, it's a hyper dog. It's a dog that needs a lot of attention, a lot of care. And if you yourself are a hyper person and you need a lot of attention, a lot of care, that's the worst dog in the world to get. You know who, you know who like, I want Malinois? I don't want to have to train them or spend time with them. That's right? the thing. They're it's like the monkey. I really want a monkey, but I need a zookeeper. I need a mal. I need Joel Riles to just come here and set up his dog camp here to patrol my property. And then I think, you know, who would go really good with a Malinois? Ranger Dave. Oh, Ranger Dave would be like, no. I don't. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no because that fucking that Malinois would have a jetpack. It'd have its own comms. It would be like Joel Ryle's it, dogs have. It probably have a. It probably have its own firearm. It would know how to use it. Um, yeah, Ranger mm -hmm. Dave. That's that's like that's marrying up too much technology. You don't want that together because then you're talking about a whole a whole other empire, <laughs> like Ranger Dave and I mean it would have it would have scuba tanks. It, it would be a crazy uh, empire. Who do you think the good guys were in Star Wars? Who do I think the good guys were? Of course, the Empire. Of course, the Rebellion was a bunch of spoiled brats. Bunch of spoiled rich brats that didn't want to toe the line. How about how about the United States? It depends on where you're, it depends on what you're talking United about. United States, Russia, and China. Which one? Which one is uh, got the black costumes? Which one has the black costumes? Yeah, because the, I, mean, the, I mean the Tie Fighters were way cooler than the X Wings. They were way cooler. Have you seen the Tie Fighter the, the the with the red helmet? I have not seen Red Hammer Tie Fighter. It's pretty badass. Because I thought, uh, like Darth Vader's isn't isn't Darth Vader's like wingman? Don't they wear black helmets? Yes, but there's like the the elite of those guys, like the Top Gun version. and I think they have red helmets. Which which is weird when you think about it, because don't you think that the the elite guys would be 
The black guys, yeah. The, the elite guys would be flying with uh, Darth Vader, not the, you, you know, just think. the slubs. Just the slubs, just the regular TIE fighter guys. Does Top Gun actually go to combat? Yes. Not in Tom Cruise movies, in real life. No, Top Gun. Uh, Top Gun. The, the cool thing about the Top Gun program, I don't know about now, but the cool thing about the Top Gun program, it was a work out to the fleet. So all the guys that went through Top Gun went back out to the fleet. And that was mostly, that was an emphasis on dogfighting, right? Uh, it, yeah, it was an emphasis on uh, on not being, we became, we became very missile dependent. And so our dogfighting skills suffered in Vietnam. And that's why they invented Top Gun is so to get these guys to actually close that, with and destroy the enemy by fire and maneuver. Have you heard that? Isn't that what the Marine Corps is for? That is exactly, that is, well, when you say four, that's the only thing the Marine Corps is for to close with and f- to close with and destroy the enemy by fire maneuver. So it's not for guys, anything else. Not lactating stations. So why, not, yeah, uh, why do you have pregnant uniforms? Somebody took issue not, with that. They're like because they still have to do their job. They don't do their what job they, they is that? They don't Sleeping do their bag job. warmer. They don't do their job. Wookie monster. Stop! Stop pretending! Stop pretending that a stop pretending that a pregnant female is a force multiplier. Not in one any shape form. Anywhere in the world is a pregnant female a force multiplier. Unless you're Sigourney Weaver. Again, Sigourney Weaver, as a U.S. Marine, could be a force multiplier. Have you seen pregnant that suit? Pregnant Sigourney you know Weaver suit? is not a force multiplier. You know the suit she got in and grabbed the alien uh-huh. and threw it out? Have you seen the climber manual for that? There's like a Chilton yeah. manual. You do, but hey, thing. wait a minute, though. There's a a Japanese gentleman who actually built the thing. The, well, he the m- more modern ones. Yeah. Yeah, there is some fucking modern... And every now and then you see a video of them going crazy and killing people, but I think that's from a movie. Might be. Okay, I so mean, back to your Malinois story. Oh, back to Malinois. So uh, our our mutual friend, he decides he's going to have this untrainable dog, and uh, <laughs> he's moving out of his house. Well, he's got this nice house in the hills. Put a, I don't know how much it costs. It's probably a five thousand dollars sprinkler system I'll in the it's back. More than that, buddy. Auto. Remote controlled, you know, bird heads, yeah, and- everything. And so he's at the shop and he's like, Hey, I got some stuff I need to get out of the garage. Let's go do it. I'm like, okay. It's got the melon on the back of the truck and it's just bouncing all around, throwing spit on all the windows. He's just being a Malinois. Nothing wrong with that. But that's, I mean, that's what they do. They need attention. We get to the house and the dog is going ape shit. So our buddy's like, Hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put him in the backyard while we get this stuff out because he's just going ape shit. Dogs in the backyard doing dog stuff, no big deal, running around, barking and shit. We fill up we fill up the truck, and it's time to go back to the shop. He's like, hmm, I don't want to put him up front with us because he's a little hyper. I'm just going to leave him here. We'll be back in 30 minutes. We'll make another run. We'll take him back to the shop. So he leaves him. We come back. Now, we were gone 30 minutes. We come back, and that dog is standing in the middle of the backyard with literally 24 feet of sprinkler pipe in his mouth, smiling from ear to ear <laughs> because he just dug up every bit of sprinkler in that yard. He, had, he, he succeeded. He won the battle. The one that he, was still there. The one that was st- the dog shit on it. The one that was still there. <laughs> he succeeded and won the battle. Uh, so yes, Malinois high high maintenance. Was Dwayne mad? I you know what I would say no. I don't think he was. I don't I don't think he I don't think he was upset at all. I think he was more you know it was more a proud papa. It's like when your dog eats the cheese wheel in your refrigerator. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Who has you, a cheese wheel in their refrigerator? It's more proud papa than anything. So I think, uh, I think he was just more proud of the puppy at the time, and he was moving out for cause. So <laughs> I bet, I'll bet the, I'll bet. So it was not his money and sprinkler system. Well, no, it was his money and sprinkler system, and I'll bet he probably had to pay to have it re put in. But I'm sure he thought it was hilarious. Not as hilarious as the time that he thought it would be a good idea. To bring his high-strung Malinois to a knife show in the San Diego Convention Theater wasn't that wasn't that good of an idea. I didn't even hear about that one. 
So he decides he's going to bring that dog to the San Diego Convention Center for a knife show that we're doing for, I believe it was ADS. And uh, <laughs> I don't know he's bringing the dog. And this is kind of before all the, like, ninja dogs that all the seals and shit had. Like, it was kind of becoming no. popular, but it wasn't, like, mainstream. People didn't realize how fucking highly trainable these animals were then. Yeah, I mean, no. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't known to the public at If the you, again, Malinois. If you if Malinois is in your head, the type of dog you have to have, you you have to have a Malinois. They're hundred percent trainable, and they're hundred percent maintainable. But some of them are like the fucking Captain America of the fucking Malinois. You just need to you. It just requires you to put in the effort, and you know, let's be real. Most Americans are lazy, and they don't put the effort in. So, <laughs> I don't know that uh, Cujo is coming to the show. Uh. Our is buddy the dog's name Cujo. No, our boy believes that he is a well-behaved dog. Which I've seen. I've at, by this time I've seen this dog like twenty times, and not once has the dog been well-behaved. Man, you could take Joel Ryle's dogs. <clears throat> we could take them to the show. You could put knives all over this table, and the dog. If Joel told the dog to lay here, the dog would fucking lay there. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. The whole no, it's show. Just, it's just training. If you you have to have the time and the effort to put into training, and so. <laughs> Dwayne, I'm going to say his name. I already said it. Yeah. He shows up. He he does not have... No, he has the dog. I forgot. He has the dog. Now, the dog is on full... The dog is on full extend leash. Like, the dog is leading the way. Right? He's full extend leash. Collar is pulled back. Dwayne's doing everything he can to get to, get to the booth. He gets to the booth, and he's like, I need you to hold my dog. I got to go back to the door. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Yeah. Just give me the dog. And, you know, the dog's like jumping six foot in the air and shit. Now we're in the convention center. Dog's jumping in the air. Uh, Dwayne leaves, and the dog immediately is like, hmm, is there something I can chew on? Let me, oh, look at that. I'm going to just start chewing on this table leg. So once he starts going after the table leg, I'm like, okay, he's not going to go anywhere. Dwayne comes back. He's got a big, he's got a, he's got that proud pop a bag in his hand where his dog took a huge shit. In the doorway, as soon as they walk into the convention center, right? So already we have a, a huge shit involved in this dog. Now, the reality is, the dog kind of calmed down while he was chewing on the metal table leg. He needed now, some baby Tylenol. The the table leg was getting its ass whooped, but the dog was fine with whipping that table leg's ass. Now, a a young a young small, not frail, probably she probably wasn't frail, but a young lady from ADS is making the rounds and meeting all the vendors. And so you could see her coming down the aisle and she's just talking and Dwayne, looking. Dwayne is single at this time? No, 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 oh. I don't think, no. Yeah, he was with uh, Someone. Uh, Playboy Playmate of the Year. Um, she, You see her, she's coming down. She's doing the thing. She's doing the thing that they do and just, you know, to make people feel like they're, you know, part of the team <laughs> and when she gets to our booth for some reason Cujo decides that looks more tasty than this table leg and goes bananas and like wants to eat her or wants just play to, with her no wants to eat her he's fucking barking and going ape shit almost did not catch him like almost did not catch the leash as the dog decided now people have been walking by like people have been walking by people have been coming up dog you know Dog goes ape shit so much, so, so much so that while she's there, we have a table flipped tall ways to kind of wrangle the dog. Now, it made like a child pin. Yeah, it made like a child pin. Now, this fucking Malinois, given the opportunity, would jump 10 of those fucking tables. So it, it really didn't matter. But for some reason, it seemed to calm him down a little bit. But yeah, that is uh, Tales from the Malinois. Wow. High strung dogs. I mean, do you think he currently has a Malinois? I mean, it, it, he's had some things go on. Oh, he's had some things go on in his life. But if you told me, if you were like, yeah, it's over at Dwayne's house and he's got five Malinois, I'd be like, yep, sounds about right. <laughs> sounds about right. But he has no grass. Um, but he has no grass no and no table legs. System, no water in the pool. <laughs> Holy shit. I could totally see Dwayne with like a, a badass 
Ford Bronco or old Land Cruiser, you know, something like from the 60s. Yeah, something classic. But with no air conditioning in it. Of co- Yeah, no. Uh-uh. No air conditioning, no, no. fucking. <laughs> no. Or didn't he, he used to have a Jeep. Didn't he have a Jeep and it had no top? There was no fucking roof or top to the Jeep. Maybe. I mean, that sounds. Driving around in the rain and shit. That sounds, that sounds about right. Holy shit. That sounds about right. Yeah. So do you have a Malinois? No, I would never get a Malinois. What would you get? Uh, uh, St. Bernard. I mean, a St. Bernard would be good. In case you get fucking in an avalanche or something. No, no. Again, I need a, if, if I, for a dog, for me, it has to be a companion dog in the sense of low maintenance. I'm not fucking, I mean, I'm, I'm realistic enough to know that I'm not going to go out there and throw the ball for nine hours to run the Malinois out or I'm not, you know, you, you have to know your limitations. And that's the problem with most people who buy Malinois is they don't understand the Malinois, even when it's 40 years old, is going to have more energy and more vigor to chew shit, jump shit, chase shit than you will ever have. So it's like a parrot. Yeah, it's a professional animal. Yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, kind of like a parrot. I always, every few years, I'm like, I want another, I want a parrot, right? So I'm like, I'm going to put a, a... Really a parrot? I would think cockatoo. Well, I want parrots and cock. I want a, I want a herd of them, right? A flock of them. Mm-hmm. I want a big, huge greenhouse where I can sit and just drink coffee when there's snow outside and just be in there where the parrots are. And then I remember I had a parrot. And it bit my toe off. I had that little cockatoo at the old apartment, and it was super cool. And then my the apartment management's like, "Hey, all day long when you're gone, <laughs> this thing is." Scr-. I'm like, "I don't believe it." So I went over, and it was. It was screaming the whole time. Every time I wasn't there, and I'd let it out when I'd get home, which I wasn't home very much. And it would run over, and it, it you'd pay it, pet it, and everything. And as soon as you stop petting it, that motherfucker would bite you on the toe. If you you had your shoes off, you know, so I start I I I had just mentioned parrots or something or was on Instagram or something, so all these parrot videos come up and I start watching. And it's like twelve reasons you don't want a macaw, eighteen reasons you don't want it, and I'm like I forgot all about that. They will they will they projectile shit, they chew on everything, they live a hundred years, like. The, the, I have the best parrots in the world. They're taxidermy. They're upstairs. <laughs> they don't make any fucking noise. I can come up and pet it and then remember why I don't have a fucking parrot. It's like that. That's what you, you know what you really need is you need an MP3 player that has. That I have has, a robot parrot. That has parrot macaw noises. Right. And a little button on the, on your taxidermy parrot. So when you're like, hmm, when you're at that stage where you're like, uh, I want to buy a parrot and they just have a sign on there that says. John, if you feel like you want to buy another bird, <laughs> press this button. button. <laughs> if I had a parrot, they would hear it everywhere. Everywhere would hear the parrot. They're so fucking loud. There's, you know, there's parrots like flying, flying around San Diego. It's actually become a, a whole problem. So they had them in Balboa Park. There was like a flock of parrots that would eat off all those fig trees and shit yeah. out there. The fig palm, date palms. But I was on live feed. And I think Scott Hasten or some a couple dudes were like, "Yes, they're fucking everywhere. They're in my backyard. They fucking shit all over everything." And the next morning, he sent me a picture of a bunch. There's like Conyers fucking flying around. Those are the loud ones. He had all kinds of birds just they fucking fly like well, like a horde of pigeons. That's what happens when you you let your parrots free range, or you're homeless. Let the homeless free range. Yeah, when you when you let them free range. So. What what's been going on I wonder this if, week? I wonder if parrots good eating. I would assume there's not a lot of meat on it. I mean, people eat squab; they eat pigeons. Yeah. What I mean, there's mean? been all kinds of. Sh- is the is the train derailment still this week, or is, are we Fuck we're past they, that? They've almost forget, they have almost said nothing about it. Trump was there yesterday. Yeah, uh, Trump, Trump was there yesterday. Well, I think you have, I think that's what should just happen, right? You have the U.S. government, and then you have the president. And he should just continue to be president. Just fucking keep doing president shit. Yeah. Yeah, Trump went down, took a bunch of... And and the only mainstream media that's reported on it was talking shit about how uh, it said Trump water. But people don't realize, like, Trump is a corporation. There are a lot of corporations and subsidiaries to those. So it's like when you go to a hotel and it says, you know, fucking the Candler... And it says the Candler Hotel on the water yeah. bottles. They have their own water bottles. And Trump had a ton of water bottles. Yeah, he has his own water. He said it's for the it, golf courses and the hotels. Yeah, and the reality resorts. is, it's, he's had it for a long time. We had a, we had a friend. We had a friend. I have him upstairs. Yeah, we had a friend that was up north at one of his rallies before he was president. Yep. 
had and, Trump water and brought us Trump water. I still have one. Of my, yeah, I have them up on the bar. Did you upstairs. ever? Did you ever try it? No. I wonder. What, I wonder what it tastes like. I mean, it probably tastes like hose water now because we've had it for five years. People have a misconception that because you're drinking water out of a bottle, that it's good for you. But most water that's in bottles came out of a fucking faucet. It came from the same place from yeah, a, that's a from city a municipality. municipality. Yeah. yeah. So it's got all this the same toxins and shit in that's it. That's why the reality is that's why you have to drink uh, Diet Pepsi. So because <laughs> it's it is triple filtered. So the water that's in here is better than the water you're drinking out of your tap, my friends, or your well, because this is triple filtered. Did I send you the uh, the United States Post Apocalypse Service? <laughs> No, uh, I don't think so. It looks like the post office, but it says U.S. post apocalypse. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Did um, so so Trump's in Ohio. Ohio brought yeah. a bunch of uh, McDonald's. Brought like a million dollars of McDonald's. Fucking McDonald's must love him. Brought McDonald's. His his normal meal is two Big Macs, two fillet of fish, and a chocolate shake. So he brought a bunch of McDonald's. Brought a bunch of bottled water. Is bringing something to these people. Yeah. Um, Where the, our federal government has done zip, literally zero. I mean. Uh, um, e, the FDA and the EPA are there, but the only thing they're doing, uh, the only thing they're doing is, uh, is running around going, there's nothing to see here. There's nothing to see here. Right. So, <laughs> so they had some, uh, testing. So if you're on well water or whatever, yeah. you could bring your water, but they weren't testing your water unless you signed a fucking release of liability for it. I've seen a lot of people, I've seen actual videos of it. That's weird. The, the, I mean, the reality is, uh, Unless, here's the thing. You would think, again, federal government, right? Federal government operates at another level. You would think, unless they are culpable, so unless the federal government is culpable in this derailment, that they would be losing their shit on whoever owns the line. What else was on the train? They're not, no, tell them that they don't, there's something going on. Whatever. Well, I'm just saying, you you're would think they would be Nancy, losing their shit. You're going to find out Nancy Pelosi owns it. Maybe. I mean, do, you, do, you, you want to hear the, you want to hear the weird shit? The weird shit that doesn't make any sense unless they really have opened a, a time porthole and they know exactly what the future looks like. Well, the, that's what I think. The I think FDA I'm, or the, the CDC changed. The CDC, yes, two weeks ago changed the definition of what uh, those toxic chemicals what yes. they do to you. Prior to it, two weeks, just prior to one week ahead of the actual accident, they changed they changed um, the classification of how dangerous those chemicals were, which is pretty weird. Well, I mean, they made a movie about the, a train it, derailment in that town. In that town, yeah. Did it, you see? Did, did you see the video of the train going down that track that I sent you? Yes. <laughs> yeah, but that that's somewhere else. That's actually in Virginia or somewhere. But yeah, I but did still, see it. Yes. But still, uh, that's the thing I don't understand. You would think, I mean, the, the whole purpose, let's let's be clear. The whole purpose is, of the federal government is to protect us from robber barons. Okay? Well, it should be to protect us from them. They've become the robber barons. Yes, but the whole purpose is to protect us from robber barons. <laughs> and a train derailment has all the, you know, well, you think liberal government we have a liberal government right now there it's all libs you would think this would be a perfect opportunity for them to go ape shit on the corporations that own those lines and those trains but instead they're not that can only mean one thing that they are so fucking deep in their pockets that that's it you know what are you gonna do well i mean they broke up like the government came in and broke up big steel and broke yeah. up big oil who's gonna come in and break up big government because that, yeah. that really is the thing it is big government now at this nobody point. they own the pharmaceutical companies i mean it, too if big you to look fail blackrock owns everything blackrock is the primary shareholder owns the biggest majority of shares in that railway they own the biggest majority of shares in pfizer they own the biggest majority shares on fucking everything and who owns BlackRock? Who every all those U.S. congressmen fucking yeah. own own tons of shares of BlackRock. BlackRock, yeah. So it 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 almost so here's here's what I think. I think it's way more insidious. I think that something is coming, or they know they are going to cause something, create something, and they want to wipe out fifty percent of the population of the world, let's say, or even more. And then they're going to take the rest of them and they're going to put them in camps. Basically, you're going to be slaves to farm for them, mine coal for them because they're going to go back on coal because they're not going to have the, the mines, right? They're going to... They're well, going the, re to, the reality is... <coughs> the rea government, government can't do shit. They never can. The reality is, 
um, if you if you think about the green initiative, right? Yeah. If you think about all the green initiative bullshit, if you reduce the world population by fifty percent, so if we were to kill off half the people on this planet. Uh, you could drive a fucking 1957, you know, Cadillac. You could have that thing running That's off right. of, running off a of coal, and right. you're not going to increase any greenhouse gases. Correct. Well, the greenhouse gases are actually resided. We yeah, but what, that's what I'm saying is, they're having. You keep hearing about polar ice caps melting. They've got the coldest temperatures ever recorded on polar well, ice caps. That right was now. one of the things. That was <laughs> that was. Here's my here's my take. I told you about this earlier. We were talking about this earlier about. Uh, 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 LA County putting up a blizzard warning. Yes. And I'm <laughs> okay. Most people are going to be like, Oh my God, blizzard warning in LA County. The way, what, what, what are they going to do? The, the, oh, the first thing that popped in my mind <laughs> was thank God. We don't have to listen to them bellyache about not having any fucking water. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It's, um, People don't realize, like L.A. County, right? San Bernardino County has mountain ranges in it, right? That yeah. hit 4,000 feet because yeah. the, the the snow warnings were for 4,000 feet, mm-hmm. right? So it's not yeah, like it's not, it's not like downtown Los downtown's Angeles. going to get locked up in snow, which it has. I mean, <clears throat> right I before think, I moved out here, it snowed in Temecula. But I, I think that con- you hear continuity of government. The people controlling government are not your politicians, right? So the the few want to wipe out the many. And then take the strong and have them basically slave labor for them. Like, like we've been told that's how the Egyptians did things, right? That's, that's what they would like to have happen. More the issue than anything. is. But if you look, they're building camps all over the place. They are fucking, they're doing it under the guise of COVID or. Well, those cons- will be, those yes. will be 100%. Because your first generation, so first generation, if, if something were to happen, a catastrophic were, let's say, I don't know. Uh, Wuhan releases another virus, which apparently it looks like they did. Wuhan releases another virus. It's actually a legit, which, which is code for United States government. Yeah, which is actually legit for a real virus. And let's say fifty percent of the pop, which w- would be crazy. I mean, well, they uh, say they have a new virus out there right now that has a sixty to eighty percent mortality rate, which would be crazy. But let's say it. Let's say it goes through. Even, even if you, even if you just, dis- you know, if you wiped out fifty percent of the population. First generation, so the people who survive that, you have to put them in re-education camps. You have to re-educate them. First generation, you're going to have to re-educate. Second and third generation, they're just going to pick the corn. The question is, do they even need that? Like, the reality is, you know, the fucking Boston Dynamics robot you see is Tesla, doing flippy flips. And, <clears throat> you see Tesla just came out with, uh, they just delivered to... Pepsi? They just delivered, I think it's Pepsi. They just delivered self-driving, autonomous, non-human operating, uh, non-human operating semi-trucks with a 500 mile range. Yep. And did you see, did you see the thing that happened two days later? No. The truck ran over someone? No. The Pepsi self-driving autonomous 500 range truck being towed away by a, a diesel tow truck and another diesel rig coming and picking up. I did not see that. Have you talked to your postman yet lately? No, I don't talk to my postman. So all the post office have to have a certain percentage of electric vehicles to include even little tiny ass Camden here. Yeah. They're getting these electric vehicles and talking to postmen who deliver mail, right? To the Mm -hmm. actual mail carriers said it's going to lengthen their routes by four to six hours. And, and she, and the lady we talked to said, I don't know how they're going to do it. Like I, like our postman, she, they own their cars, right? So these well, cars here, she has three. And she's like, when we break down, who's going who's gonna to come and take care of these electric cars? When my car breaks down, my husband shows up in another car, and I drive away in the other car, and he gets the, the broken one running. He's like, we have three identical cars. Well, see, they're going to do the same thing. The post office is going to do the same thing. Um, the post office is going to do the same thing that corporations are going to do. They're going to leave them parked somewhere. They're going to be parked. They're going to be parked behind the post office, and those route carriers are still going to be independent contractors who are going to run those in gas-powered vehicles. Because the electric, I mean, think about, especially, I mean, even here in Camden, how much is the post office route a rural route? You're so, not, you're not fucking taking a Tesla down any of these damn roads, right? And we're paved. You know, imagine I, Big Sandy. It's, it's like, it's, it's literally like, the movie. Not, yeah. do you remember, do you remember that you and I okay. went to the movies 
Okay. And we saw the postman in the movie theater. Yes. It was like a hundred years ago. Yeah. A yeah. hundred years ago. Yeah. U.S. post apocalypse. But that, service. I mean, okay. I'm surprised the, you don't. If, if anybody I know, I would expect you to have a Tesla. Not a Tesla. I think he, I like a Honda Leaf. I see him in a Honda Leaf. Why do you not have a Tesla? You couldn't even drive here in a Tesla. Yeah. No, you can't. I, I drive too much. I would literally be sitting at stations all day. Yeah, they're, they're they're. I mean, the electric. If if you're a if you're a city dweller, electric might seem like a good idea. If you're until something happens, even in a suburban area. I mean, heat pump sounds like a great idea till it's under twenty degrees. Yeah, I mean, these, these fucking mini splits don't work when it's yeah. freezing. Um, and the fact, I mean, just just the fact that big government hasn't really even taken over. And big government, we've already seen big government go. Hey, by the way, your Teslas don't don't charge those. Right. <laughs> don't it, don't plug your cars in your house. They had the um, electric vehicle summit and didn't invite the the biggest the top electric, electric vehicle yeah. guy. Yeah. The electric world. Uh, while they can, while we can create um, cool gadgets and make it run fast and do all that, it, it's still nowhere near. It's still nowhere near the capability of a gas-fired engine. Think Meaning, about, it can go faster, <clears throat> it can accelerate more, but if you're talking about longevity, if you have to take a, you know, a trailer load of TVs from the port of Los Angeles and drop them off in Tennessee, there's no fucking electric vehicle that's going to be able to do that. Not efficiently. You're going to have to cut the United States in half, put a river through there so that you can bring your ships to drop your TVs closer. Well, I, I mean... As soon, they, as, as soon as the new Madrid fault goes off, it'll be they two just had a again anyway, they, they so. had a pretty big rebellion because of the port of Los Angeles um, during the COVID during COVID, and a lot of ships are moving into Florida. So DeSantis, yeah, yeah. he's like, we'll take them. Yeah, we'll get take them. Get and rid we'll get, of Disney, and we'll take the ships. Yeah, Disney. That kind of backfired, aren't they? They're fucking laying people off, and like it, it's bad over at Disney right now. Well, I mean, they're. Yeah. They went woke. <laughs> they went woke. And the problem with woke is, woke is extreme. Well, your government did too. Yeah. Well, yes. So when... Be, we, because, they, because they grabbed a... They grabbed a dementia patient and made him president. And, I don't, but I don't think... It hasn't... It's not him though. Well, it, 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 it's not him. It's not, it's not him doing that. It's the people that are actually running the government because... Yes. Joe Biden, the, the reality is... You take Joe Biden, you just take five years. You just take five years, get in your little get on your little internets and go back five years. There's not a single policy that he is pushing that is part of Joe Biden's tenure. Right. So it's all bullshit. He had to sneak into Ukraine, nobody knew he was going <laughs> Wait. and he took a train to get there. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Did you see? Okay, I know we talked about. I, I know we talked about his cabinet and, and what a soup sandwich it is. Yeah, his. Ca- our, well, you know they fired that dude. Is that yeah. what we're talking about? Um, Sam, we're going to talk about Sam here. Did you see recently? There was a. <laughs> there was a female uh, uh, fashion a, designer, African. The did you black see that? Lady? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah! And caught is that motherfucker wearing her dress. <laughs> so do you know who we're talking about? Okay, the the bald dude that was in charge of Department of Energy, in charge of nuclear waste, right? Yeah. They, they got this this bald guy, and he wears lipstick and high heels everywhere. There's a lot of pictures of him with a mohawk and shit. So yeah. they put him in charge of nuclear material um, handling or handling. something like that, yeah. And he gets caught stealing a suitcase at the airport. So they kind of don't – nothing really happens. He gets caught stealing a second suitcase at the airport. This is while he's a member while of he's, the cabinet. So, yes. Yeah, so they kick him off the cabinet. There's – they find out that there's multiple instances where he's taken really expensive luggage at the airport and just walked away, and they have him on camera. He actually got arrested, put in handcuffs by the police department, caught him. One of the cop, the police departments caught him. So this lady has come out now, and I saw it this morning. I was reading it, and she says, my name is so-and-so. I am a, a fashion designer. I designed these dresses. Here's pictures of me from 2013, 2016, whatever. And I was surprised when I saw this guy stealing luggage and I was just looking through his pictures and he has my one-offs out of my luggage that was stolen. He stole a suitcase of hers 
and there's half a dozen photos of him wearing different outfits that are one-offs that she had designed for runway shows. And he fucking stole them, and here he is now. It, and this is just this is just a country who is coddling mental illness. That dude is mentally ill and should be in a facility. I question whether he's mentally ill. He's mentally or, ill. Or he is so lacking in low performance that this is the only way that he gets attention. Well, if you're lacking in low performance, that's a, that's a mental illness. I agree with you. I would, I, would very, I would agree with that. I would yeah. agree with that. Um, and he should be handled. Like, oh, here's the thing, though. The thing that pisses me off about this whole story. Where is he right now? We, me and you, <clears throat> we could go down to the airport and steal some luggage. We'd be in jail. Yes, we would. We wouldn't be out walking the streets wearing, uh, you know, last year's fashion designs. Yeah. We'd be in jail. But well, we're coddling we're coddling these people and if and it, and because he has not been punished for the crimes that he has committed, he's going to continue to commit crimes. I feel like they're starting to be punished, like they're moving towards punishment if you're watching any of the congressional and then again I'm like, oh, I'm getting caught up in this. This is just hopium. It's mm-hmm. just here, watch these bread this bread and circuses. Until they in, until you actually see one Vajaya, of those yeah, one of, and one and until you these. actually see one of those people go to jail. There it's just bread and circus, man. That's right. all. Those those Republicans aren't going to do shit. So the um, head of YouTube has resigned, stepped down, or was removed, apparently. So everybody's like, good, maybe that's going to be some change. Maybe Elon Musk will buy YouTube. Elon Musk cannot save the world. You you people need to do your part. I think you're going to be surprised to find out that he's a different type of evil. Well, I mean... He's not on their team, but he's not on your team either. Absolute, you know... Uh, that type of that type of power that he has is uh, very corruptible, and so I think for the most part he's handled it pretty well. I want to see him and Bill Gates do that but, that uh, slap challenge thing. I you know he just they just they're releasing. Uh, I just saw that he's releasing a new coin. Did you okay. see that? Did you see that they're still releasing Twitter files and nobody's saying shit about it? No, because people don't care. Like I, again, like hey CIA. Hey, President of the United States, go ahead and release those. Go ahead and release those documents that say the CIA killed John F. Kennedy. It won't even make a blip in the. How about uh, in did, the service? Did you see they're releasing? People just don't the, care. They're releasing the January six, um, all the files. There's over forty thousand, hundred and forty thousand hours of video that they've released, <laughs> and people are starting to sift through it. Yeah. They gave it to um, Tucker Carlson. They gave it all to Tucker Carlson. So he's going through it, and they already have, they've already showed video of people with ear mics grabbing pedestrians and pulling them in the building. And the lady's like, you're not going to pull me in here and get me get me in trouble with this, or you're not going to make me commit a crime. And she was trying to leave, and they wouldn't let her leave. They let, I mean, that, the apparently. reality is they let those people in there. Yes. They and let that's those what the people footage, in there. That's what the footage is showing. You know, and that's why. But it's even beyond that. It's That's why uh, they let those people in there. What I want to see, like, I okay, awesome, whatever. I, bullshit um i want to see the other hundred camera angles of that um oh the tomahawk missile hitting the pentagon i want to see that they only have one camera there john no they only showed one they only camera. had one camera all it's those, that camera all those other cameras it's that camera that's over on the grassy knoll that can't you it just you can kind of see the guard shack but you can't really see anything right. they only have that one camera so none there. of the other camera angles have been released uh when they when they disposed d- deposed deposed when uh trump and whoever else went under they were they were not sworn in and there was no cameras allowed, and there was no witnesses allowed when they wanted to talk to them about the the towers well it's because uh, it's because I mean, the truth of the matter is, we know more, uh, as a president of the United States, Secretary of Defense, CIA, NSA, we know more than we're allowed to know. Or we know more than we're allowed to say we know, but we don't know enough. Like, so Bush, I, I, in no way, shape, or form, in no way, shape, or form did President Bush know that the Twin Towers were going to be hit. I think he knew. In no way, shape, or form did he know. I think it, did he's not. Was he there, wasn't in charge. Was there uh, was there intel and information available that could have pointed to the twin towers? I'm sure that there was intel and information that pointed to it because every day 
the president sits through a brief, and every single day there's a plot to kill Americans. Have you heard of uh, the dancing Israelis? No, I haven't heard of dancing Israelis. You should, you Don't should, they all dance? No, you should look at that. How about the van with the four people stopped leaving uh, across the bridge that they had detained as, as terrorists or possible bombers, and then that all just disappeared also? Have you heard that? I haven't heard that one either. There's a, a, there was a lot of videos. There was a lot of material on just weird shit. <clears throat> on YouTube, and it, it's very difficult to find now. It's on YouTube still, but it's not. You can't search. It's not searchable. Right? Well, we People get put it up as other stuff. I mean, the reality is, we get intel all the time, and it, it's a lot easier to put. It's a lot easier to put the intel together after the thing has happened. Like, I'll give you an example. I, I'll give you an example. When we were leaving, uh, when we were leaving Camp Gannon. So my first deployment over in Iraq, Camp Gannon. When we were leaving, the Al-Qaeda guys stole a dump truck, a fire truck, and an ambulance. So that they stole these three vehicles. To use as bombs? We knew exactly where the vehicle, we, we knew exactly where the vehicles were. We actually sent Marines to identify where these vehicles were. We identified the vehicles. We were ripping at the time, so we were... We were leaving. New battalion was coming in. What does RIP stand for? I don't know. Some stupid acronym that military is always coming up. But re, remain in uh, something in place. Okay, so you're leaving. Retro, ret, I think it's retrograde in place or something like that. We were leaving. Another battalion's taking our place. Uh, we did all the footwork on where it was at, what it was, what they were getting ready to do with it. I mean, we knew they. We actually knew that they were going to make bombs out of them. That information was handed over to the next battalion. Here you go, bro. This is this is what they're going to do. And CIA is like, let them have them. I don't know if it, it wasn't the CIA. The CIA. The Somebody C, said. Fucking CIA doesn't even know where. Hadith. No, it's just it became unimportant. And because it came in unimportant because they were ripping and this is the first time this battalion was on there, that uh, firm base was attacked by a fucking dump truck, fire truck, and an ambulance. <laughs> You know, uh, it's just, it's that intel. There's a lot, we get a lot of information that comes together and we don't, we don't put it together right. And the truth of the matter is, even if we did put it together, right? Like, let's say you're working over at the CIA and you're putting all your post-it notes up on the wall and you're like, holy shit, I think they're going to bomb the world trade center. When you go to present that. There are more people in that there there are more people sitting in that room that are worried about covering their asses than there are people worried about whether the World Trade Center is going to get hit. Why the World Trade Center? Uh because they tried to blow it up the first they I, I, from the basement. They tried to blow it up from the basement and uh, old one eye also or whatever. Yeah, old one eye said we will take them down. I mean, they just made it their mission. I mean, cool. I mean, we do that shit all the time. So it, they just made it their mission. It's just like when we went into Iraq before we went in, in, into Afghanistan. Um, we knew Afghanistan was where all this shit was coming from as far as World Trade Center stuff. But... All the gold. Nope. But Bush 1 did not finish the Iraqi army. Bush 1 let the Iraqi army cross back into Iraq and survive. Bush too made it a goal to destroy the Iraqi army for his father. So that's why we went into Iraq first. And we kind of, you know, the reality is if you think about it, we just kind of, and I'm, I'm sorry if you went to Afghanistan and you were injured, but we just kind of fucked around in Afghanistan. We could have put, you know, we could have put the full force of the U.S. military into Afghanistan and turned that place into a giant mall. Where do you but think we it was did more dangerous, Afghanistan? Afghanistan. Or Iraq? Afghanistan yeah. was way more dangerous. You know, the the the, the differences. The people were more, had more resolve. They had a resolve and a they had a res, they had they a also, resolve. They, they also a will. You all like like we always a, say, right? People are comfortable. They had fucking electricity and water in fucking Iraq. Yeah. Um, well, I'm just. They just had a. You know, the difference, the, the real difference is when you think about Afghanistan, the Afghanistan uh, male population has always been fighting. You know, the Peshmerga the Russians, and all them, yeah. they've, they've always been fighting. 
and they understand how to fight. Um, Iraq, not so much, because because the reality is when you're in, you're in a dictatorship, you know you can say, you know they the Pentagon can run around and go, ooh, the Iraqi army is the third largest army in the world and they're scary. It's a dictatorship. He's not training those he's not training those soldiers to a standard because he knows that the biggest way to overthrow a government is through a military coup. So you got troops that don't have any fucking you, you got Iraqi troops that don't have any experience with fucking weapons. You don't have, you know, the tank commanders have never fired their tank. It's just because you're afraid of a coup. So it it doesn't like it's it's like North Korea. That military is shit. There is no, that military has got nothing. That's why they keep firing ballistic missiles. Because a ballistic missile. Didn't something just happen between North and South Korea? Uh, I mean, it happens every time. We, we do these, uh, we do these military games in South, or not military games, jump rope. Um, we do war games in South Korea every year. And every time we do them, Kim Jong-un is like, oh. <gasps> You can't do these war games with the Imperial Americans. And he fires a missile into the China Sea. I mean, who cares? I, I got a really we got a serious question, though. Where where have you been the last week? What do you mean? Where were you last week? Home? Like in the last seven days, where have you been? Home? Did you hear that uh, Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton's hitman was busy this week? I you know, Oh, oh, yeah, I was home. I was home alone. Do you hear? Do Watching you know what TV? I'm talking about? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, here's so, the problem. So the dude that signed Epstein into the yeah. White House every time. I'm, I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna I'm gonna clear this up for you, John. The problem is, um, executioners. Okay, I know you don't. I, I'm, this is a little bit of a hole. So hold on. Executioners. It's a fine art. Okay, so when you hang people, it's a fine art. You probably like, shouldn't shoot them at the same time. Well, that, what I'm saying is, it's a fine art. When you when you hang somebody. Um, you know, a lot of people think you just throw a rope over a tree, make a couple knots and you hang somebody. Yeah. You gotta have a horse. It, it doesn't work that way. How you make a noose. It's a very fine art on how to make a noose. So it breaks the neck when the, when the person falls. Well, you, you just asked the FBI and Bubba, uh, well, the NASCAR guy. What I'm saying is because it's a fine art, it's also one of those, one of those skills that have been lost. Kind of like, uh, kind of like getting somebody to walk in the store and be able to operate a sewing machine. It's a it's that skill that's been lost. So unfortunately, unfortunately, if you don't know how to do it right, guy ends up hanging from a tree, kicking and spitting, and it's not a pleasant thing to see. So you just shoot him in the chest with a shotgun. Was he shot in the chest? <laughs> yes. So they hung him with a lamp cord. Is that what they said? I don't know if it was a lamp. cord. I thought they hung him with a lamp cord, shot himself. They said they've ruled it a suicide, and there's no weapon. They, yeah. We we don't know where the gun is. No weapon. Shotguns. Somehow, somehow. Well, that's that. It's that whole thing about guns. Guns kill people. I mean, the shotgun probably felt really bad. I mean, because I'm assuming they were friends, right? I'm assuming that the shotgun and the dude were friends. And the shotgun probably felt really bad that he shot him and ran off into the bushes. Didn't Joe Biden shoot a man with a shotgun? No, it was not Joe Biden. It was it was Dick Cheney. It was it was uh, Secretary Dick Cheney. Uh, bird shot, hunt shot his friend in the face shot the his shot friend him. hey this is the best part the best part is he shot his friend in the face <laughs> and his friend apologized for getting in the way <laughs> that you you know you know that uh you know dick cheney had some shit on that dude like he had like as soon as he shot that guy in the face uh one of cheney's handlers walked over there and went hey man don't forget about these pictures we got of you you know and he's like, "Yes, I am sorry that my face got in the way of your shotgun." I wonder if uh, I wonder if there was a White House office, uh, President's office rug under the body this time. Maybe. Then they. Who was that dude that they rolled up know. in the White House rug? I don't know. He was shot in the white. He was shot, and then they rolled him up in the fucking rug. Yeah, it's not. But it's not. Uh, it's not uncommon for White House rugs to be found at it's, crime scenes. It's not uncommon for White House rugs to be found at crime scene, but it's also not uncommon. For people who are associated with the Clintons to die, to die in a manner that would be impossible to be suicide, it's not uncommon, right? Right. So, I mean, I don't know how his hands got cut off, but he shot himself in the head with his own gun afterwards. Yeah. Well, I mean, they had the 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 the, the big the first big one was uh, 
what was that thing that crashed when he was governor? I can't remember. It wasn't Emron. It was it was one of the big. It was the case that they were going when who was, when who was governor? Uh, Clinton. Okay, so they have you know about all the the crazy Clinton shit. Have, have you ever heard of um, prison blood? No. So while Clinton was governor in Arkansas, Arkansas had these. There was a bunch of things going on where they were uh, taking blood from prisoners. Okay. And they were selling blood. blood bank? Yeah, it's fifty, and it comes in fifty-five gallon drums. They were selling blood. Look that up okay, and just start researching that. That shit is fucking insane. Okay. <laughs> First off, are the Clintons vampires? Why do you need 55-gallon drums of blood? Who's using that? Well, you, what you, adrenochrome, but that's not, I didn't, Did that you, wasn't Are you even, getting it? But again. No, they were selling it. Are they, you getting adrenochrome using, from prisoners? They were using, they were taking blood from prisoners and selling blood um, for whatever they were using it for, yeah. right? Transfusions or whatever. And then there was a bunch of stuff. They There was a bunch of, it was tainted blood. There was a ton of tainted blood. Mm -hmm. And they were selling it anyways. And people were getting sick. And that's how yes. they actually found it all, it all unraveled and came back to these prisons that he was somehow on the board of directors with or something. I, mean, I would say that your first clue of tainted blood would be 55-gallon drum. Like if you I, if you I, rolled a fifty, so that that seemed like that didn't seem like the weird thing in the story. Like that's actually how they they have. Well, yeah, I, I mean the drums. reality is the reality is when you when you have people you, when you have people in power in in power situations, right? They're always going to they're always going to exploit. I'm not going to call it a loophole, but they're always going to exploit whatever manner and means to make money. It's why all these politicians are millionaires. How do you, how do you go into politics and come out a millionaire? You only go into politics and come out a millionaire is if you are exploiting, doing corrupt shit, and doing corrupt shit. So I mean, you know, it's like uh, the prime example is that uh, that police officers we knew that worked in California, and all he had to do every day was just pull over two cars. If he impounded two cars, that's all he had to do, and that's because the city council was making. Tons of money off of impound cars. Speaking of corrupt politicians, um, what's up with uh, Pelosi's husband? He's gay? Uh, no, so I don't know that. Oh. I don't know about that. Um, but you haven't heard know. shit more about any of that. But he does own a construction company, right? Yeah. And that construction company had all the contracts for this high-speed railway that was going yes. through California. And California went through an eminent domain, a bunch of almond uh, orchards that had been in family name for 200 years and avocado orchards, and um, they wouldn't sell. They wouldn't eminent domain. They wouldn't sell the property. So they cut all the water to these properties. So all these farms are null and void now. They are dead. They're decimated. Um, so they started building this train, and it's supposed to go from – South to north all the way. Yeah, train whatever, to right? nowhere, actually. So they've built this train. They have sections of track. The tracks have never been uh, connected. A train has never been on the railways. Yeah. They have killed all these businesses, put all this uh, construction in place. Nancy's husband's company is the one that got the contracts for this thing. And it's now, de it's, a, it's now defunct, and they have abandoned it after putting thousands of these farms out of business. Well, you, thousands, they put... They put ten dollars into a construction project they knew was going to go nowhere. Um, he actually made ten billion dollars off the deal from the federal government. Yeah, out of the forty billion, forty-five billion. Yeah, um, and uh, w w this is ha the thing again. This is the corruption. This is the level of corruption, John. The issue is this: I don't. If if you say Scully, I want you to build a train that goes from here to Las Vegas, and I'm like, okay, this is. This is how much it's going to cost. It's going to cost $45 billion, right? All I have to do is start it, okay? All I have to do is start it. Get it. Get a couple tracks laid down and then be like, we can't finish this. We're, Need some more money. we're bankrupt. And then the federal government steps in and gives you free money. It, that's what they're doing. I mean, the, the train will get finished eventually, but it's, it, but it's going to be at the tune of $500 billion, Right. And it, in no shape, in no shape or form, if a, if a real contractor or a, like a, like a real CSX guy got out there and was like, okay, this is how much the track costs. This is how much the ties cost. This is how much the labor costs. Would it be $500 billion? But the whole point of this is not to build a track. It's to fleece the government. Yes. 
because they're all, you know, the reality is the money just flows back into their account. It's, it's a way for, it's a way for government employees to steal from American people. So how much money did we just give to Ukraine yesterday? I don't know. Who knows? 40, 45 not, billion more. It's not real. Who cares? That's a good point. It's not real. That's it's not real point. money. I mean, it, 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 here, you're, here's the thing. You're fighting the Russians. Okay. I, I want I want everybody to understand. Are this. we fighting the Russians? Is there a fight? The Ukrainians are fighting the Russians. Okay. You know why? China, why? Why are we giving them money? Do you know Pooh Bears? You know Pooh Bears in Russia today. Yeah, because the Russians want Pooh Bear, uh, Pooh gonna, Bear weapons. They're gonna be good friends. Well, no, Russia, I don't. They're not. Russia Russia is going to buy all that shit that that China will no longer sell to the United States. The, well, th- that might happen. That that stuff might open up so. Uh, he can get his economy bumped up, but China is not going to, uh, outside of trinkets, like when we're, if we're talking about war shit, outside of war trinkets, China's not selling weapons to the Russians. They're going to give them, they'll, yeah. What's a trinket? AK 47s, uh, you know, old Chinese T 62s. Does Russia need China for AK 47s? Yes. Why? Because when, uh, when the Soviet Union collapsed, most of that equipment stayed in those countries. So, you know, while the Russians made, I think, 40 billion AK-47s in the so- during the Soviet time frame, those weapons didn't come home. The only weapons that they tried to bring home were nuclear weapons. So, um, like, examples, Putin. For, I think, eight years now, Putin's been trying to modernize the Russian army, right? Well... It's minuscule, the uh, the type of equipment. Like, when you think about, you know, when they're talking about the T-90s, they've got, like, 20 of those things. <laughs> you know, they're not. They, they, he's trying to, he was trying to modernize, and now he got himself in a war that he did not think would turn into a real war. Um, and so, yes, he does need the Chinese for bullets and Band-Aids and all that. And the Chinese will probably give them bullets and Band-Aids. But it's not going to be uh, stealth fighters, long range missiles. It's not going to be any of that because does China, China does China have stealth missiles and stealth bombers? They have China are, has are the, they, do they have technology on par with us? No, China has the same thing Russia has. Okay, but here's the thing: right now we are finding out uh, through Ukraine. Our and and I know the Department of Defense is fucking so furious that this is even happening. But right now we're finding out what a paper tiger the Russians are. Uh, they still might, you know, they still might beat uh, the Ukrainians, but it's not going to be because of T-90s or SU-23s or anything. It's going to be the 300,000 conscripted soldiers that they're going to force to go in there. Or it's going to be that missile they drop in there. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't, maybe, maybe, I, but they are, they are on the verge of putting a half a million troops into if he launched, Ukraine. If he fucking launched, let's say he fucking drops a, a nuke into Kiev. Yeah. Are we going to be like, oh shit? Is that going to be? Is that going to be Hiroshima? Like we bet we're just going to stop fucking around, or I think, or do you think we would retaliate? No, I think I think unfortunately for Ukraine, I think that uh, a nuclear a, a a a tactical nuclear weapon is the way that Putin can stop the war in Ukraine and save face because mm-hmm. we're not retaliating. You don't think so? No, we're not. We're not going to the. We're not going to uh, nuclear weapons with Russia. The United Nations and Europe will not allow it. What they will do is they will force everybody to come to the table, and they'll be like, "Okay, Russia, you fucked up. You dropped a nuclear." Uh, and I'm sure it will be tactical, meaning it'll have a low yield. It'll be Hiroshima size. It's not going to be a fucking ICBM and half of Ukraine's missing. Um, It'll be tactical, and they'll be like, okay, Russia, you fucked up. You dropped a nuclear weapon. Um, all your troops need to uh, go back to Russian territory proper. Um, this war is fucking over. And the good news for Putin is that saves face, right? He How is that a bad thing for him? It's not. It's not a bad thing for him at all. He if, The reality is Putin needs an excuse to get the fuck out I of Ukraine. I feel like that would actually be a good thing for us. Well, I mean, the the problem with the problem with uh, – uh, them using a tactical nuke on Kiev or something like that is all the corruption files from the Biden administration will 
suddenly disappeared. So, um, <clears throat> you think they're over there shredding paper right now? Oh fuck, they're shredding paper like you can't even believe. I mean, like you can't even believe because they're they're stealing this money. The reality is, there's not a fucking single bit. The again, the amount of money that we are dropping into Ukraine pales in compare i mean our, the amount of money that we spent in iraq and afghanistan pales in comparison to the amount of money that we are dumping into ukraine and we modernized the army navy and marine corps during those two wars so i mean the, the truth of the matter is every fucking ukrainian should be driving an mrap right now all the money we've spent they said that they could take every homeless person or every person in the united states give every person one hundred and seventy-five thousand. that was the, the first, first time. payment. Yeah, the first time. So we gave them, the first payment we gave them was more than the all the Iraq and Iran, or Iraq and Afghanistan war on the first payment. Was yeah, more. that was the first payment. So what I think, all this money's going over there. They're owned by somebody else. Whoever they came to the table with said, hey, one world government, you can have, this is your island or whatever do these things and they're creating all this money that they are stealing and they're taking all that money currently to buy assets, whatever those assets are. And they know that they're going to depopulate the world or there's some aliens come, whatever the fuck it is that's about to happen, or they themselves will release some virus that will, some people won't get sick because they vaccinated the people they want to keep or whatever. You want the, you want the chickens that don't die. Right. Those are the strong chickens. So do you know about the chicken thing going on? Uh, I mean, what the the bird virus? No, I didn't. I didn't know there was a bird virus. Okay, so there you got a bird virus here? No, we don't. Of course not. There, there is a there is actually a bird flu. It's been mm -hmm. around forever. Birds every year you see birds. Yeah, dead. bird flu. I mean, you can't every you, every year birds die. So they've got this bird flu, and it's up to the state um, states as to how they handle this handle thing. It, yeah. So they're killing all these birds. Five hundred and fifty million birds have been fucking. De they call it depopulating. If if we had a virus here. And we're like, hey, we got some birds dead. Um, they'd come in, check it, and they're like, okay, we're going to depopulate your farm next week or whatever. And they come in, they euthanize all these animals, and they typically bury them deep. Why would place. you even tell anybody? Um, because they're, because it actually does look like there is something real to some of this, but no, but not I mean, most uh, of it. But I mean, like, for example, uh, because, your, bir your bird's up here. Yes. Right? You're, you go out one morning, you got 10 dead birds. Mm -hmm. Shit, 10 dead birds. The next morning you go out, you got 20 dead birds. Yep. A month, you've only got six birds up there. Those are the strong ones that but don't again, have the antibodies. Those are, those are the strong ones. Those yep. are the ones that made it through whatever yes. it was and now have the antibodies. Yes. But, I, I, okay, you just tell me, because I know you got like fucking 10,000 birds up there. 200. Um, I mean, that's close to 10,000. But you got all these birds up there. Would you call anybody? Are we recording? Yeah, we are recording. But I mean, well, I mean, wait a minute though. I, okay, forget it. There is no. Here's the thing. You don't have a responsibility to report anything. Here's so, the thing. Here's the thing. Okay, so there are two cases. One is in, I want to say Argentina or Brazil or somewhere where it's passed to a, an eight year old, nine year old girl. Mm -hmm. There's another case last year where it passed to a human being in Colorado. Okay, doesn't seem to be a big thing. They seem to beat it with some mild antibiotics. Mm -hmm. That's the end of it. Now. The bird flu, if it is real, it, it typically comes from... It's, it's real. It, it is. And it comes from ducks, mostly, yeah. that fly waterways right where we are, right? So we don't we haven't seen anything around here, at least not that I know of. Nothing has happened. That's because you live in Camden, John. And in Camden... People don't talk. No. Gonna, in Camden, ducks' feet don't touch the water. Yeah. Well, that was... <laughs> that's a big thing, too. People... He, what he's referring to is people here... This used to be the major place to come duck hunt, and every year somebody would lose their life over duck drawings. Uh, Camden is actually on America's Most Wanted like 10 different times, um, or Unsolved Mysteries or whatever, um, because he, motherfuckers here handle their shit and just dispose of the bodies. Um, but the, the duck thing, so it looks like this is, I'm getting my information from yes, Yasunama TV, Yasunama Ventures, right? They, interdu they interviewed this lady, um, and he talks a lot about the conspiracy theory things happening, the plants that are being burnt down and the railway derailments. And even, even a couple of years ago when 186 major timber mills had burnt down all on the Canadian border, like, and he puts all this together and has all this supporting evidence. And usually he's like, okay, 
everybody thinks it's a conspiracy theory. Here's what is really happening, and here's how this happens. Um, but they interviewed this lady. I want to say she was from Washington, and it was uh, it was a poultry farm, right? It's a small scale farm. You are not considered to be big poultry until you keep. I think it's a hundred thousand birds or something. Jesus, that's but a the, lot of and birds. And the crazy shit is when the bird flu shows up at a Purdue or Tyson or any of these big farms, they can be back online next week. They're they're allowed to come in, depopulate, sterilize, and then they can come back on. But as a small scale farmer, which is anything under a hundred thousand, you have to sit dormant for six months. They can't have any animals. They cannot produce any animals on their property for six fucking months. They're out of business. They're bankrupt. So they have these animals. And she says the geese are what gets hit the hardest. It's, it's a shirt. Like you should almost keep geese as a canary in the coal mine type of thing. Because if you come out and your geese are dead, something's going on, right? Because that's the first thing to fall. So the, right. the geese, then the ducks, then the chickens. Now there are certain types of chickens. There's two different, like there's different strains of Rhode Island Reds. One of them doesn't fucking get sick at all. Like, they're just not. She said, we had some ducks go down. We were on quarantine. It was near the Christmas holiday. They were supposed to come out. They didn't come out. We weren't allowed to transport any of the animals. We weren't even supposed to leave the property because we might have the virus on us. So she's like, we're talking to veterinarians over the phone. We're doing things we can as we can. And she said, some of these animals just continue to get worse, and they died over a couple of day period. She said, but other animals we had, other types of ducks, they kind of got the sniffles, they had a little goo running out of their eyes, and now they're completely healthy. She's like, these people, they didn't show up to depopulate the farm for three or four weeks, and she's like, the virus is gone. So you can't tell because a bird who had the virus now has antibodies, and they're right. testing for the fucking antibodies with the PCR test. Right. So she's like, the, the shitty thing is we have these animals now that have antibodies, it's weeks later. They're all alive. They come in and they make us kill all the animals. These could have been the animals that would no longer get this fucking virus. And she's like, we have other animals that fucking simply weren't sick and they fucking depopulate everything. Too bad, too sad. No fucking funding for you. They do pay. They paid them. Uh, I think she said they paid them $6,000 um, from the state. Now, it's at the behest of the state how they handle things within their state. Other places come in and they're like, okay, let's lock, lock this down for 90 days and let's watch these animals. Maybe there's something to this that these are the strains we need to be well, the, breeding. I mean, the reality, again. It's all controlled. Here's the, here it it's is. It's the antibodies that you want. It is all controlled by Big Farm, which is owned by Big Pharma. If you, right. if you derail and unravel this, the same groups that own Pfizer own big egg production. All these plants and everything. Also, all these... The egg companies, the egg producing companies bought Purina and Purina, Purina, yeah, Purina was making all the poultry feed when everybody's animals stopped laying eggs. It's all fucking like it is a thread. And when you pull it, all these fucking big corporations shake out of this fucking rug as you fucking unravel it. Of course. Yeah, but I mean, you can't, you can't, the reality is you, you can't, can't take prove a, it. You can't do shit. You can't take a hundred thousand of anything that eats shit and breathes and put them in close proximity and not think, Hey, these things are never going to get sick. Of course shit's going to get sick. But well, the crazy thing is the ones that are in close proximity are the ones inside the fucking sheds who are allowed to fucking be back online fucking seven yes, days later because they use all because the, they're owned by the companies making the rules. Yes. Yeah. And they, they use all the. All the pesticides and chemicals and treatments. All, that, the, all the poisons that humans that are, are going to consume. That are for sale, that they can get them back online. That's all, that's all it is. It's just how much, how much money can you spend, right? Like, I am sure, I am sure that for the, for the uh, producer that has 100,000 birds, that there is actually a solution there too. So here's your push right now. It's just right financially not, it's cheaper to fucking cull the herd. Here's your, here's your the big push right now is they're trying to lock down so that animals cannot be shipped anymore. So when you go to tractor supply, those burgers come from Stromberg or whoever, right, 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 right. Who, whatever they have a contract with. So Tuesday, I think yesterday or today, if you go to tractor supply, mm -hmm. it's supposed to be chick days. They're starting mm -hmm. to get all their chickens. I saw last weekend tractor supply had all the troughs yeah, out. They've got they're all, have all the yeah. birds, right? They're trying to make that so that that can no longer happen. Animals cannot move across state lines any longer. 
I mean, here's the, here's the issue. The issue is this. I mean, when you think about it, it's anti, when you say animals cannot move across state lines anymore, it's very anti, um, democratic cities. <laughs> Cause where are they going to get their food from? It, well, it, their animals can move across state line. It's wh- just it, those rules only the, apply for you. Where and are me. they going to get their food from? Because because yeah, the, the reality the, is, the, that, the, but those rules do not apply to those big. They don't apply to well, Tyson. I mean, okay, I'll give you an example. Um, the majority of cows that you see in feedlots in California come from Tennessee. Correct. And they get the way they get that is not that there's a a ranch here that has ten thousand cows that they take down there. It's multiple ranches that take their uh, to the cows to the, house, to the auction house which, and get auctioned. Which goes to so, KFO. I mean, I, I'm, again, I'm for it. You're for what? I am for it. I am for it. Stop them being able to transfer animals across state lines. Make it so that it can't happen. Because all that's going to do... But the enforcement won't come down but to, all, to those animals moving to California. It's only coming down... On small scale producers, but all that's going to do, all that's going to do is make it so that, um, all that's going to do is make it so that homegrown economies are going to get stronger. I'm with you. They're just going to get stronger. You uh, get, uh, okay? So I cannot buy an apple from uh, the Fiji Islands. Sucks. Those are good apples, but you know, the minute you can't get an apple in Camden, there's going to be somebody here selling apples. So they're trying to. They're trying to. They're, it looks like. I don't know where this is going, but this is what is put forth that they're trying to do right now. So the workaround is, okay, I can't buy chickens. I have a $1,000 incubator. Mm -hmm. I can buy eggs. Okay, we'll hatch the chickens. We'll sell the chickens. Just like you were saying, local economy. So, but it's coming. You'll see it soon. Um, Well, that's because the... Do you know they just ban all veterinary medication without a prescription? Do you know that goes into effect in like 60 days here? You know, right now you can go get veterinary um, insulin if you, which should, if somebody should need but it. Right. Speaking of veteran, uh, but I just went to, <laughs> I just went to a feed store that I've never been to before, and I, I'm sure it's at all feed store, at all local feed stores. But I just went to this feed store that I'd never been to before, kind of out of the way feed store. They they uh, they make their own uh, uh, feed for cows and shit. And <laughs> where is that? It's. There's a big. It's not Aaron. It's it's. I I can't think of the name of the county where it's at. But okay. Anyways, they make their own feed and everything, and uh, guy's really great. And was like, I mentioned one thing, and he was like, Oh, you got to use this, this, and this, and your shit is going to be perfect. Um, but I'm walking around the, and it's the it's the typical uh, co-op looking thing. It's a, it's not even co-op. It's more it's more 1950s gas station in the sense that there's tons of stuff in this very small room. I mean, from uh. From bear traps to huge boxes of ivermectin, <laughs> like huge. Yep. He had these huge, and I was like, "Man, I really want to buy that huge box of ivermectin just to <laughs> just to have it at the house because it's just it was like a it was was it oral injectable or paste or what was it? I don't know. It okay. was a, just a huge box with horses on it, and it was like ivermectin. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my god, I need to buy this just to have it at the house. So right now you can buy what they call horse paste, right? You can buy uh-huh. ivermectin right now at Walmart. It's like fifteen dollars a tube. Really, at Walmart has a horse on it. Comes in a little square hmm. box about this long. It's in the pet section at Walmart. But that's what this is about. This is about you not yeah. being able to go buy ivermectin. This Correct. has nothing right. to do with your fucking your birds. But in this ban, they have banned. Fish mocks, fish amoxicillin, yes. fish pin VK, everything that you could buy from Walmart Pet RX, right? Or yeah, amox, not, or fishmeds.fishmocks.com. You're not allowed to save yourself. Yes. And and when you, I, I heard a very interesting interview with a doctor yesterday. He's about 85 years old. And he said that the, the ladies, some ladies met with this man. He was, he was instrumental in pioneering several vaccines, right? And he was a pioneer in many things for neonatal care. There was no neonatal care up until the 60s, 65s. Yeah. Um, and he was talking about brain death. And it's, it's, there's not such a thing as brain dead because if you were brain dead, your organs wouldn't pump and we can't harvest and transplant dead organs, right? But one thing, these ladies, they were vax, anti-vax, right? So they wanted to meet with this man and he met with them. And they said something about ivermectin. He goes, let me tell you something about ivermectin. 
ivermectin didn't start out as a veterinary medication. Right, yeah. Ivermectin was a human medication, and the guys that pioneered it won the Nobel Peace Prize. It is a human medication, medication yeah. which that, that was then adopted for veterinarian, but all the media spun it as being horse paste. He said it, causes, it, it cures certain kinds of cancer. Yeah. It does all kinds of things. But they didn't let human beings use it because they said it was veterinarian. It was a human med long before it was well, ever veterinarian. The, the reason why, uh, the reason, the because real it's reason, inexpensive. That's right. The real reason why they were same with same with hydrochloroquine costs nothing. Yeah, it costs nothing because it's an old medication, yes. and that is the real reason why they didn't want people going to buy right. ivermectin. Why do you have no COVID in in Africa? It's hot. Maybe. I mean, they can readily. I mean. Same in Mexico. You can just sand? go buy it. You can buy this shit. There's anywhere. too much sand. In, there's too much sand. I don't know. I mean, again, because there are places. The, the reality is, we should probably ask Jill Biden because she's in Africa right yeah. now. Uh, what is she doing? Toilets? Uh, or? Oh no, no, no. Uh, yeah. There's mass migration because of all the uh, starvation in Africa. Probably th- wait a minute. Fault. It can't be. Didn't all? It can't be. All those singers got together in the '80s, and they stopped. Feed the world or yeah, hunger. feed the world. They stopped all the we hunger the in Africa. Yeah, they stopped all the hunger back in Africa. When Michael that, Jackson used to be black. Was he? Yeah, I think he still was. I yeah. think he still was. But they stopped all that. Uh, feed the world stopped all that. Those those. Uh, yes, tell them what happened to all the food. Actually, happened. Does anybody yeah. want to know what really happened there? Live Aid. Huh. it's interesting. They did raise a ton of money. Hold on a minute. You got to be again. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll go to you. You know, all the singers got together. Did hands this, across America, right? That's what it was. I don't know if it was. I think Hands Across America was different. Okay. Um, but Live Aid, uh, all the singers around the world got together and they sung all these songs and had their first little thing and they're going to make all this money. And I think, I, I might be wrong. I think it was like $45 million they raised. They, they raised a quite a bit of money. And the guy, the, the, the actual guy who put it all on, like worked his ass off. Um, and they didn't make as much money until Queen went on, by the way. Um, but he worked his ass off to get this to make this thing happen. And they raised the money. And it, the cool thing about the way they did it is they did Cradle to the Grave, for the most part, is they just didn't hand the money off. to. They didn't just, like, hand the money off to John and be like, John, go buy some rice and beans. Um, they... They pushed it all the way as far as they could push it. They got a tanker, or they got a, uh, cargo, a ship. cargo ship full of food. Like, I don't remember how many tonnage it was, but it was a lot of food. Um, and they sent it over to Africa, and it got to Africa. I don't know which state it was. It might have been Kenya. It might have been Somalia. I don't remember which state they sent it to. Um, but they, they've actually done a documentary about this, so you can look this stuff up. I'm not, I'm not making it up. Um and the government immediately went and seized that property. In the sense of seizing it, they did not let a single piece of food leave that ship. Because what most people don't understand, because we're Americans, we're dumb, we think, uh, you know, that we think that money will solve all problems, which is it never does. There's not a single, there's not a single thing that we've used money to to solve, single problem that we've used money to solve that has ever been solved. In Africa, they use food as obedience. So if you want if you want your population to to be obedient to your rule, you execute that through food and starvation. The people who were being starved were the people that weren't supportive of the government at the time, and the government was not going to let food go to those people because that's how you create a rebellion because now you got fat, happy mercenary soldiers that are willing to go in the streets and kill people. So none of that food left that ship. It all rotted right on the dock. And eventually they just threw it all away because it It's a lot of what, uh, <clears throat> when, when oil com- companies would go overseas, right? They didn't ever pay their workers in full money. They had to pay them in partial rice rations because when the worker would get paid, he'd go buy a gold tooth and a bunch of cigarettes and his kids would starve at home. So they would pay them 60% in rice rations and the rest in spendable income because that that they wouldn't feed their fucking yeah families. i mean it's almost the same thing that happened in somalia exactly that's so tell them about somalia it's, all the food that came yeah, in yeah almost the same thing that happened in somalia that um cuz somalia is exactly the same way 
you get your loyalty through uh, uh, shithole countries. Is what it, it's actually shithole countries. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Ask, you get your, ask uh, the current president, uh, Donald Trump, the real president. Ask him about shithole countries. Uh, he's in uh, Ohio. Yes, helping which, which, with the which people the, who, which somebody related to the government has turned into a shithole country currently. Yeah, but anyway, so in Mogadishu, um, we had the same problem. Uh, people living out in the out in the sticks were starving to death. They had a, a horrible drought. Um, but the reality is the government was manipulating the system in order to create obedience. Uh, the government collapsed because they weren't very good at managing that. And warlords took over the country. Um, again, who, people, used, who used to run the country? It used to be like a tourist. It was like a, uh, the, well, the, it was beautiful. The French, right. when, the, when the French, when it was a French colony, it was beautiful. So when you, I mean, there's a common denominator to all of those places, but when you rule savages with an iron fist, there's there's beauty. It's not the beauty is never for the savages, but as soon as the iron fist is removed, it turns is, back sounds, into shithole. That sounds how that sounds a lot like where we're currently going. Yes, that's exactly where, <laughs> where we're, we're currently, currently going. going. But anyway, so the UN again, we think if we throw money at something, it's going to fix the problem. So the UN moves into uh, Somalia. They set up their tents. And uh, they decide that they're going to start bringing in food. Well, if you're a warlord, which there were plenty of warlords in in uh, the country, in Somalia, if you're a warlord, and this fucking government agency is running around the country feeding the people that are not supporting your particular clan, of course you're not going to allow that to happen. So, uh, in what always happens, because the UN is a waste of fucking time and money. What always happens is the warlords just started stealing the food. So no food was going out and no food was going out to the people who were actually starving. As a matter of fact, I will tell you this. I was in Mogadishu for nine months. I never, ever one single time saw anyone who was hungry. Never saw anyone who was hungry because all that food was being stolen and distributed by the warlords. Because if I can give you enough food to survive, you're going to be loyal to me. Um, so they were stealing the food, and so the UN and their brilliance, because basically what they would do is they would take a bag of rice and they would drop it off at John's house and be like, here, feed your family, John. And then back to the UN camp, eating cheeseburgers and watching satellite TV. Boop, boop, boop. Hey, look, who's playing the soccer game today? And then the warlord, and then the the warlords would send their men to John's house and be like, hey, Remember that thanks, for the, thanks for the rice, bro, and take the rice from him. So... In its typical fashion, the UN's like, hmm, warlords keep stealing everybody's food. What can we do about this problem? Hmm. They didn't change anything. They, just wanted, they just wanted to be the ones in charge. They wanted, they wanted to be the warlords. They're like, hey, I know. You, know. you know what would keep the warlords from being able to steal everybody's food? If we give everybody guns. Let's give everybody AK-47s. Were there not guns there already? Oh, there were guns, but the, the reality is... You know, okay. The people who were hungry, they didn't have guns, right? If you if you had a gun, you weren't hungry, right? And so they're like, let's give everybody AK forty sevens, and then nobody will be hungry. Kind of the reason why the you why we had a no shoot on, uh, we'll say infantry portable weapons. So, you know, if somebody was walking down this, everybody in Mogadishu had a gun. But if somebody was walking down the street with an M16, AK-40, you couldn't shoot them. It had to be it had to be a crew serve weapon. It had to be some sort of heavy weapon before you could you could take them to task. Did some of them need shooting? A bunch of them needed shooting. Really, I mean, it, it, I had a actually we had actually had a four star army general come up to our post and was like, "Why aren't you shooting more people?" I'm like, because of the rules of engagement that you gave us. That, anyways, um, so they gave everybody they gave all these poor people AK-47s. Well, all the warlords did was just send two people to the house and went, hey, that, that shiny AK. new AK-47 you got? Let me have that. Let me have that real quick. I'm going to take that. And so they just took him. I mean, it, it, like those those positions of power, especially in the UN, they're full of people who have no fucking clue what the world is really like. Because they're liberals? Yeah, I would say that you're pretty liberal if you work for the United Nations. And they they no task. I mean, the reality is, you know, like I get, I think it's funny. I think it's funny every every time I get a thing where it's like the United States is giving all its power over to the United Nations. The UN is going to come and take guns. UN who? 
the the only teeth that the UN has is the United States Army. And South Africans. Every yeah, but even the numbers just aren't there. The every foreign, time they the need foreign legion. Every time they need to punch somebody in the face, they come to America. The, the UN couldn't have done shit in Bosnia without America. The UN, you know, even if you think about Somalia, it was the tenth mountain that was providing the the tooth for uh for the UN. Yes. There were 10,000 Pakistanis there. They were worthless. <laughs> worthless. Worthless. And it, and I and I will say this, when you left the when you were in the UN compound and you walked out of the embassy, every single flag in the country was flying in the in that compound. The French had the legionnaires there. They were so scared of the, the the UN was so scared of the legionnaires that they put them out in the in the desert they didn't so even far let them come in <laughs> so far away from everything that they that the legionnaires couldn't really do well, anything. Didn't the U- legionnaires used to didn't France used to own that motherfucking yes, place? Yes, and there was there was some there were some issues that there were some issues with how the French were helping uh, a deed escape capture, but again, the the majority of the UN was completely ineffective in Mogadishu that they just didn't do nothing. They sat in there. They sat inside their little secure compounds. They collected that extra pay because the, like the Pakistanis, they got, um, they got, I believe it was extra. I might be wrong about this, but it was three times their normal pay. They got 200 extra dollars from the UN for every soldier that was there, which was actually three times the amount that a Pakistani soldier makes anyways. Was it passing to the soldiers? I believe it. I believe that the soldiers were actually getting it because it was the, it was the, uh, you know, the dudes on watch with us up on the building that were telling us about it. Did you guys get extra UN pay? Fuck no, no, they, they actually, the UN, the UN actually offered to give American soldiers $500. uh, Every American soldier that was in Mogadishu $500 a month. Which nothing, but still, you know, back in '92, that's still a lot of money. And Bush was like, "U.S. soldiers are not mercenaries; they are not going to accept your stipend." Send, it, like, all, send it all to me yeah, instead. Send it all to me. But yeah, so I mean, soup sandwich, just a soup sandwich. I will tell you this: the Marine Corps was there twice, once under a UN flag and once under a Marine Corps flag. When the Marine Corps was running Mogadishu. There was no problems in Mogadishu. Everybody was getting fed, and the warlords were not doing a fucking thing. Because the truth of the matter is, the Marine Corps was a different animal back then. How many Marines were there? One battalion. How many is that? <laughs> uh, I mean, you're talking uh, with a crew of months, you're 2,000 plus. So 2,000 people. But, but the reality, again, 2,000 plus. But the reality is, that's only four rifle companies. That's only four rifle companies. It's actually not that many people. But if you... You know, if you tell a Marine, if they step out of line, you can bonk them overhead with a baseball bat, people stop stepping out of line, right? They, they get in line. I, I mean, we had, we did a, our, we did a, a med debt where, where, uh, you fly in all your non-combat element and set up tents and let the Somalis walk through your tents and you give them shots for diseases that they already have antibodies for, or they'd be dead. Uh, we did a, a a med debt, dent, a dental debt where, again, there's no way they were filling anybody's cavities. They, it was just, it was, uh, I'm, I'm going to sound bad, but it was just so people could get a ribbon. Um, so they're pushing these people through. Well, the, the Somalis outside are going bananas. Like they're going, they're going bananas. And one corporal with a baseball bat within five minutes, everybody was in a nice orderly line. He literally walked out with a baseball bat. Yes, he walked out with a baseball bat, and he implemented said baseball bat on several individuals, and that was the end of shenanigans. Everybody stood in line, and what were they going crazy over? Uh, because I, I am sure, because basically they were going into the compound. And we said we're going to do a med debt. Um, services are services are really not at that time. There were no services in Mogadishu. So I am sure that they were the real reason why everybody was going bananas is because they thought they weren't going to be able to get that magical thing that we were going to give them, right? The magical pill or the... Did they know what they were getting? No, I don't think so. What did we really give them? Uh, you know, probably a smallpox vaccine and a 
uh, something to sterilize them. Yeah. No, nothing like that. Whatever, whatever we, <laughs> what I mean, some, you th- some Bill Gates. You, you, the reality is, it, but the reality is a battalion of a, uh, a musoc. When a musoc leaves, we we're not we're not carrying a bunch of extra shit. I mean, there is extra stuff. Don't get me wrong. There's extra stuff. But if you if a musoc if a musoc goes over somewhere and then you're like, hey bro, um, this city they all have anthrax. Can you uh, inoculate them all? They're gonna be like, uh, two hundred, maybe. You know they don't. They're, we're not we're not rolling around the we're not rolling around the the Pacific Ocean with all this well, with all this extra shit. We don't have human beings walking around with anthrax. No, I'm just saying it would kill them, right? Like. Uh, well, you can get, you can actually get, you can actually get and survive certain anthrax. So the Russians have a bunch of territory that's going to be forever. We, we do too. Yeah. In Utah. Yeah. We, we spread, we spread anthrax in Utah as a, as a, a training thing. And so you can't go in there. I mean, the reality is we have on, on, uh, a lot of people don't know this is on Camp Pendleton or not Camp Pendleton, I'm sorry, 29 Palms. We have a no-go area. It's not because of chemical weapons. It's because of, uh, um, I can't think of the name of the fucking munition. The plate of uranium? No, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's bomblets. It's these little bomblets. And, uh, the thing that, the, they're not, they're, they're not landmines. They're different than landmines because they don't bury. Bouncing Bettys? No, they don't. They don't bury. Basically, what they do is that they're aerial, uh, they're uh, runway denial things, where they fly over runway and they drop this bomb and it opens up and it's got a, a hundred of these fucking little little teeny. They're about the size of a hand grenade, and they fall and some of them blow up and some of them don't blow up. And what it does is it creates a it recr- it creates a serious hazard, and <coughs> and defusing those motherfuckers is almost impossible. Can we not just push a line charge over it? Again, what happens? What, what most people don't understand when they do, like even EOD, when they do that, when there's like, oh, there's a bomb in the road, we're going to blow it up. Um, explosives also push things very far. So if you have, like if I take these little bomblets, they're all contained in a certain area, and they're like, you can't train in there anymore, it's fucking off limits. If I throw a line charge in there, it's going to destroy some of them, but some of them it's just going to kick out further. So you're going to be chasing these things all over. Now, I know EOD... I know EOD did a thing where they were where they were trying to shoot these things with uh, fifty cows with Barretts, which is is one way to do it. But it's just not it's not cost effective to be out there all day. It's just easier to just be like, yeah, fuck it, you guys can't go out there. I mean, yeah, they have so much land. Yeah, they have so much land. It's just miles. easier to say, hey, uh, you can't go out there and train anymore. How much area is like how much what, how much area is that thing? I don't know how big it is. It's not. I don't think it's too big because it was. Uh, if I if I remember right, it was an artillery unit. Is there just a chain link fence around it? No, it's just on the map. Don't go here. <laughs> Does it say like landmines or something? It's I just, mean, it's just a don't go. And then, and you in your brief, you get brief when you get when you go to uh, when you go to your RSO class, you get briefed on all that shit on why you're not allowed out there and all that shit. I mean, there. <clears throat> maybe it's not true. Maybe there's a fucking UFO parked out there. That's what I was going to say when you maybe first said it. Maybe there's two UFOs parked out there, and we just avoid it like the plague. That's what I was going to when you first said it. I was going to yeah, say maybe we just maybe it's two UFOs. But okay, so uh, what do you think's coming next? I mean, it, it it seems to be. I mean, hardly anybody's talking about Ohio right now because of whatever they're talking about. I mean. That was, and that was just a week ago. I mean, what it's it is happening so we're, rapidly. We're now. ramping up. Uh, I think. I think the next. I know it's old. I know. I know it's old, but uh, the Ukraine war is supposed to ramp up next week. Like it's funny. Actually, tomorrow is supposed to be. The day. Yeah, but it's funny. It's funny. The White House is. Re- the funny part is the White House is telling everybody when the Russians are going to attack. Like the White House is out there going, yeah. Yeah, so the Putin, Russians are going to – how the fuck renew, does the White House know? Putin didn't renew the, the START treaty or whatever, so they're actually supposed to be they, – they're for the first time in 30 years or something, they're putting nuclear missiles or nuclear um, armaments on ships now, they're saying. But it's funny because we just heard they had a super missile cruiser off the coast of – Yeah. They, you know, a month ago. They always do. So they're, they're starting to make new – 
armaments or whatever. Um, Oak Ridge caught on fire yesterday. My question was, why are we starting to re-enrich uranium or whatever? The porthole. Um, yeah, the port. They have a hedron collider or something. Porthole. Out there. They open. actually yeah. some. They actually came out and said we have contacted another dimension like a year ago. I wonder what that looks like. Or what or what that even? I picture Stargate. I picture Stargate. So you have to. You have to. You have to go through the gate to talk to them, or did they throw like an old corded phone through and are like, "Hey, what's going on well, over there?" Well, in the movie, we did both. The TV series. Did they throw in the TV series? I don't, did they, they throw, threw something, something through, through there. Walkie talkie or something. It, I don't know what it was. Um, there are pictures of stargates all over the world. What looks like stargates? We took one out of a museum in Iraq when we first invaded. There's pictures of that fucking thing coming out of there. Maybe. Um, but it, it's just happening so rapidly. Russia has these LED lit signs all over the place. I don't know how many there are. I saw photos of like three or four that said uh, um, 224 is the day that will be remembered in history. Like they keep saying this over and they said it last year on the same date. Uh, you know what the date today is? Isn't this the anniversary of the invasion? It's 223. Oh shit. 223. Yeah, we could, we should have came out with a shirt. So it's two two three today. Tomorrow's two two four. That's the day that we're sp- that Russia's supposed to invade. I don't know. Is uh, is uh, Joe Biden's not there? Uh, we don't think he is because he. We saw a picture of him falling up the stairs again. <clears throat> Did you notice the picture of the stairs? It the stairs look a lot longer and less steep. Did you see that? Did you notice that? I, I don't. Well, I guess. I was gonna say I don't know why don't they just fucking put a wheelchair ramp in and why don't, fucking why don't they just leech his ass a down? Fucking conveyor belt to go up there. Yeah, like airports have. I mean, or uh, what they need is uh, uh, what they really need is they need to get with those boys from Pimp My Ride. Because <laughs> if if they could if they could put hydraulics on Air Force One and just lower it down to the ground like so he Snoop just has Dog. one step, yeah, once that's the way to do it. Yeah, that's well, the way to do it. There was Snoop and the crew out there, Perp Soul Plane. Yeah, get get the crew out there to fucking put spinners on Air Force One and some hydraulics, and then we won't have that problem. So what do you, what do you really think is coming? What's next? I mean, I think the you know the big news story is going to be uh, whatever happens between Russia and Ukraine. Now, the problem with the problem with invasion tomorrow is uh, everything is a fucking soup sandwich right now. Nothing's frozen again. Well, yes, but it's kind of what they were waiting for is for everything not to be frozen. I thought they needed it frozen so they but can, they had tanks, tanks, tanks. But they had a they had a, a super rain or something going on over there, and so all the territory, all the areas where they thought the Russians were going to move through are pretty soup sandwich right now. So do the Russians attack through it? I, fuck, I don't know. The you Russians see? are crazy. They you know, some people won't know, some people don't know this, but they would march they would march a rifle company through the snow in front of tanks in order for the tanks to be able to traverse the snow. So it would beat them down. Mhm. Did you see Tur- you know the Turkey earthquake, right? Yes. Killed a bunch of folks and yeah, a, lo- so, a fucking bunch. Okay, do you know there was a second one? Yes. Do you know that administrations and other governments have come out and said that the United States has something called rods from gods that we launch from satellites and that we actually caused those earthquakes? Do you know that people on the ground in Turkey said there was going to be another earthquake and apparently even named the date and there was another earthquake in Turkey on the date that they said it would happen? I mean. There's people, and and so Turkey was, um, I, well, what's the Turkey was siding with Russia, and Turkey would not come out against Russia. Apparently, is 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 Turkey a nuclear war, a nuclear power? They're not, but they're in, they're NATO. They're aligned with NATO. They are okay. Yeah, that's the but, issue. But they would not come out with on NATO's side, is what I was hearing. They were yeah, they were they're, kind of they're, wishy-washy, and as soon as that earthquake happened, they're like, oh yeah, we're we're in NATO. Um, they're, they're not they're Yeah. I mean, they, they actually, Turkey has a, a, a general dynamics plant. They make M1 Abrams in Turkey. So I didn't know that, but I find it like, I wonder if the people that actually make the decisions, their families weren't killed. It's never like, it, it's just like this shit going on right now with our politicians, right? It's not their kids that are going to go to war. No, never. I mean, world war one was right. George, you got to defer it. <laughs> world, world war one was all, all fought. All the, all the people that were in charge of World War One for the most part. They all played together in the same yeah. They were all cousins in the castle together. And yeah, they were all it's cousins. Like, and then that what's that inbred family? It's super super inbred. Like all so, of them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but they are right. Right. So that's that's the thing. They will play this game, which does not affect them. It only affects everybody. 
that they are in, you know, uh, that they are. I mean, there's a, there's a. The overlords of. There's a point. Um, there's a point where it does affect. It, it, there's a point where it does affect them. But the reality is it never touches them like what do you think would it happen? touches everybody else. What do you think would happen right now if they said, oh, if this, this war kicks off, right? Mm-hmm. And Oh, wait. Now, and now they need the draft. Wait a minute. Uh, speaking of war kicked off, I don't know if I don't know if you guys were paying attention because we were shooting down aliens and we were doing all kinds of crazy shit. But the new omnibus defense spending bill went through. It passed. And you know what was in there? Your daughters are now draftable. Yeah, I told you. I've been. To, I've told you guys that six months ago. Your that was daughters coming. are now draftable. Uh, yeah, but, I but said it's that. passed. Your daughters now can be drafted. What so, kind of fucking weak ass bitch country? China. Makes their daughters draftable. China is. Just oh, again. Did. China just did. But again, China, right? China, not America. You don't need to draft your women. What you need to do is stop turning all your men into girls. Well, I mean, there's there's something to that as well. Um, so what do you think, if, if they implement the draft here, mm-hmm. what do you think that's going to look like? A fucking soup sandwich? I see a lot of people, and, and I mean... It hasn't happened, our, so our, it's easy to say it. But a lot of dudes are like, you're not taking my kids. Like, you come to get my kids, you're going to have a fucking a two-way gunfight. Well, again, what what most people don't understand, what most people don't understand, especially in the two-way community, is they don't have to come get your kids. They don't have to. They don't have to come get your kids. They're not gonna, they don't have to send a sheriff's department to your house to come get your kids. If you're the guy that's like, hey, if you come get my child, it's a, it's a two, it's a, you know, it's going to be a gunfight, right? They're not going to do that. They're just going to turn your fucking life off. That's all they're going to do. They're going to turn your fucking life off, and you're going to be begging them to take your fucking kids. Do you think that's part of the CBDC thing, the central bank digital currency? That's I mean, yeah, it makes it easier. That's supposed to go into effect here. Everybody's it makes it saying, everybody's saying July. It makes it easier. It's a hell of a lot easier to turn shit off. But it can also make it so you can't buy any guns with your money anymore. But the reality is, you know, uh, the reality is if if. If someone in the federal government right now, um, if someone in the federal government right now wanted to, uh, I don't know, if they wanted to beef with SOE, they don't, they don't have to show up. You just get up one morning and your fucking lights are off and you're like, why are my lights off? Cody, go to the electric company, find out why we're We don't know why your lights are off, Mr. Willis. The federal government has put an embargo on your fucking ass. And then the next day you get up and all your fucking chickens are gone. And you're like, why are my chickens gone? And you look at the video camera and you're like, what's the fucking SPA doing out there in the middle of the night in fucking black pajamas and AKs stealing all my chickens for? What's SPA? Uh, isn't that the... the Animal. Animal control people? Control I don't know. Anyways, I'm just saying, you know what? It, 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 there is ways for the government to go after you without... Or, or, you know, you get on there and you're trying to buy some fucking German chocolate cake. And you're like, boop. Denied. What the fuck? Boop. Denied. What What do you do? Right? There's a point where you're going... There is a point where everybody's going to walk out the fucking gate and be like, what do you want from me? I mean, they, they can turn your fucking life off without ever having to exchange bullets. The only reason... The truth of the matter is, the only reason why we exchange bullets in the United States is because we're trying to justify we're trying to justify equipment that the or police because have. Because you're trying to set a big enough example. Oh, yes, true. It. True. It's a lot easier, if you know, it's a lot easier to get people to do what you want if you kill a few of them. So, that but they don't have to. Or burn burn down their whole compound. You, yeah. yeah, again, they don't have to. Do you remember Reno, she said uh, we're just going to wait it out. Yeah. And then 6 days later, well, cuz yeah, they don't they didn't they didn't realize that when you say you're going to wait it out that these people you know, the people in the compound have, have been praying for the opportunity to wait it out. They're going to wait. They're going to outweigh the government because the government's got other shit to do. They can't hang out on the weekends that you're. So what do you think is coming next? I think it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be something with NATO that they, that, um, the Russians are either going to attack Poland or Poland. Yeah. I mean, all the all the lifeblood that is flowing into Ukraine is coming from Poland. Poland. So, I mean, in theory, it's not a stretch. It's not a stretch for Vladimir Putin to say that he is at war with Poland. I mean, so as much as he says he's at war with NATO. Striking Poland, what does that look like? I mean, I don't know. 
He's got 300,000 conscripts that he's getting ready to use. Does he have to use them, or could he just fucking launch some missiles into Poland? He could launch missiles. What uh, would the retaliation be? I don't know. If he Because nu- the issue is this. If he nuked Poland, the UN is, would he get the, the same results as nuking Kiev? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe they might come to the table. The only, the only, the only issue is, is if he nukes because Ukraine, Putin, but if Putin has said multiple times he will sit down and talk, and they're not. If he nukes, down to talk. If he nukes Ukraine, he just nuked Ukraine. If he nukes Poland, he's nuked a NATO member. So it's not. It's not whether or not. Now again, NATO is weak. It's fucking weak. NATO the, shouldn't even exist right now. The NATO, yeah. Um, it, the reality, as soon as the fucking, as soon as the Soviet Union broke up, we should have been like, all right, Europe. It's just like that. Uh, it's you're just on like your that, own. That Patriot Act thing. Yeah, you're on your own, Europe. Um, it's just like those federal taxes you're currently paying. There was no real reason to keep NATO alive because you know, again, as a military force, the Russians, they're a nuclear, they're they're a nuclear power, and that's the only thing that we should really be worried about. And we can retaliate with whatever they can muster anyway. So, so you said, uh, you know, like turning the frogs gay, that whole thing, right? They they actually showed that there are so many chemicals in the water that male frogs are actually producing yeah, eggs he, now. He was right, and changing sexes, right? Maybe that's the same water that all the fucking U.S. citizens are are drinking because male testosterone testosterone is going down. Women are becoming more aggressive and more manly. Grip strength is coming up in women, but grip strength has reduced 40% in the male population in the last 20 well, years in the United States. Maybe it's the same shit happening. It's common. It's, it's, not, it's not even, it's not even uh, crazy science. Um, it's, it's actually pretty mainstream science that since the end of World War II, uh, male testosterone in the United States has been going down. Uh, over the last 20 years, it's been going down exponentially. So, I mean, it, it, why? Well, it's because of all the shit that's in the food. It's really because of all the shits in the food because it's not, it's not other countries. This is happening to correct because because it's all all the shit that's in our food, all the, all the food dye colors, all the food coloring and shit. Well, it's the, it's the, um, roundup. No, what do we grow? It's the soybeans. The soybean, soybean is in everything that we eat and soybean is an estrogen producer and, you know, over time, as you reproduce and create less testosterone, you're going to push that onto your children and less testosterone. So it's not, it wouldn't be weird to say that in, you know, a hundred years, there's nothing but uh, asexual well, that's, women here of, in the United States. A lot of people said that you're going to have just one sex of people. Maybe. You're not going to have. A, since the Since the robots will be running everything, it won't matter. Maybe that. I mean, well, think about think about Boston Dynamics. Why? You know, those dogs are already out there. Yeah. You know, I have customers sending me videos of yeah. those dogs when they're delivering loads. Yeah. The dog walks have you up seen to you, <laughs> looks at you, and then walks backwards because it's got cameras on both uh-huh. ends. It won't. Did you see the armed one? Some video came yeah. out of the other day. It won't. Uh, I, I don't. I mean, in a in a uto- in a in a purely uh, fictional. Billionaire utopian society, dogs walking around delivering your package and bringing you a burrito and shit, uh, is effective. But in the in the current world that we live in, uh, those things, those dogs walking around are going to be just like the millions of fucking scooters that are in the trash pit and the million of fucking you know other stupid inventions that people have put on the streets. Have you seen? <laughs> have you seen the delivery, the little delivery truck roadblocks? I haven't seen roadblock. Really it, it's these little, it's, I don't know what city it is in, but they have these little nice little delivery trucks that just drive around town and deliver your sandwiches and shit. And they're getting stuck everywhere. And when they get stuck, the next one gets stuck. And then the next one gets stuck. <laughs> and so they got these 20, they got this one. It's, a, it's actually pretty interesting. They have this one ro- They have this one delivery robot that's at a crosswalk and it won't cross the crosswalk because cars are getting too close. So every time it's going across, the car will come and then drive past it. Well, because it stopped, every one of the fucking other ones are stopped behind it. And they're just sitting there. It worked great at the Universal Studio lot where yeah. there was no cars when they tested that, Well, it. I mean, that's it. It's it's when you, when you uh, what's it called? You can, it's real easy for us to create a thing that works really, ga- that works really good at small scale. 
So like if you're, you know, if you're at the, if you're at the Apple campus and you have this one car that drives around and delivers people, it works really good. But once you large scale something to the, that's the thing that most people don't understand. Like, you know, when we, when we talk about electric cars. Plus, you don't have assholes at the end. I mean, they're yeah. little twats, but you don't have assholes that are going to, hey, Bob, come on, let's turn this thing over, right? Yeah. Put that motherfucker out in the ghetto and see what happens. Well, they, there, there that, are videos. Put that out in Chicago and see what they do to there, it. There are videos of people beating up those robots, but and there's even a, a video of people attacking an autonomous car. Um, I mean, but it's you, it's when you, you can't scale, you can't drive a fucking uh, Amazon train car down the tracks without them looting that motherfucker. Well, it's just when you it's when you start scaling things up when people just don't understand. Like, for example, the the infrastructure the infrastructure when it comes to automobiles, it took sixty years before that infrastructure was was as capable as it is now. Like you being able to get fuel wherever you could get fuel. Well, they're burning those down too. Yeah, but again, it took a long time, right? And it's the same thing with like electric vehicles. People think, oh, well, it's just good. We're going to have electric. There's Is there a charging station in Camden? No. I didn't think so. They're supposed to be putting one in. I didn't think so. They're supposed to be putting one in Paris or something. But again, it's, it's infrastructure and scaling things up. A lot of times it doesn't work once you scale it up. Those fucking, you know, the delivery robots, they're going to go, they're going to go to the wayside because it's, they're going to start breaking down. They're going to start not delivering and they're going to start disappearing because you've got this fucking thing that's driving around town that definitely has something inside of it. A value. A value. Why don't you think that there's not going to be gonna, a uh, gang roaming the neighborhood with a minivan yeah. stealing you, these fucking you things? You better build that motherfucker with no copper if it's around here. Yeah, so it's just, it's, they're dumb. So what It's do you, like drones, again. It, it, drones delivering, drones delivering whatever. I saw this stupid thing where a guy got, uh, he was in his front yard, he's like, I'm going to get coffee. He got coffee, he did it in the fucking place where brought coffee. Yeah, that's one company delivering one coffee. Now, now uh, scale that up. You've got a hundred different corporations sending. You're not. Nobody's going to be like, yeah, it's really cool that there's nine hundred drones flying over my house at all hours of the night, delivering everything from dildos to coffee. It's real cool. No, you're going to be out there like this, shooting those motherfucking drones down. It's just dumb. So. What do you think is coming? What's, I, what's I, next week going to look like? What's the next attack? Who knows? <laughs> like who? Who knows? Do you believe? Do you believe that some of this is instrumented? It's of course intentional. You, do you know that the 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 uh, do you know that the UFOs the the three UFOs that they shot down the hot air balloons from the hobby club the three UFOs that they technically shot down after the Chinese balloon haven't found any wreckage. <laughs> haven't found any wreckage yeah they came out and said one of them had explosives on it or something yeah well I mean, nobody they didn't bother to say hey we can track all explosives they didn't they didn't say none of that what what explosive was that a hobby rocket motor yeah i mean you know the best thing i the best thing i saw on facebook was top gun 2 or top gun 3 and it's a f-22 mm-hmm. raptor chasing a fucking with the balloon on <laughs> chasing it. the chasing the chasing the balloon has all those kills funny. stenciled yeah. on the side yeah uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what the next. Uh, who knows? I mean, the the Democrats missed a perfect opportunity. What's that? The Democratic Party missed a perfect opportunity. Imagine the chaos. Imagine the chaos and the support for war against Russia. If they would have blown that train up. If Russia had blown the train up. If somebody would have blown that oh, train. Oh, Biden's up. train. The train Biden was on. Yeah. You could change the, they could, they had an opportunity to change the whole course of everything that's going on. Well, there goes the theory that they want to get rid of Biden. I mean, they could yeah. have just gotten rid of him. Clearly, perfect that's not opportunity. What it was. Perfect opportunity to get rid of him. They missed it. I mean, it, it, you know, it, the, everybody's coming out and saying we attacked the North Stream pipeline. Everybody. Yeah, everybody. You know what's going to happen? Nothing. 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 Did you see the red dot they had him standing on? He only had half his shoe on it where he was supposed to stand. <laughs> Well, you know, come on. It's it, it, if this was any other, if this was in any other incidents, you could charge all his handlers for elder abuse. True, but you know, exploitation. There's your real human trafficking. Yes, free tape. 
Get get uh, Biden's handlers. Free Tate. All right. You got anything else? I don't think so. Don't forget your your gulps and your googly eyes. Gulps. That's what you're going to put on the side of your Glocks. What, what's the, the gulp? gulp? I don't get it. Cuz it just that's it just looks like a a gulp. A gulp? <laughs> it just looks like a a gulp. Like it looks like it it would that's the sound it would make when it's fired. Gulp. If anybody wants to come out here, we're having Self Reliance Festival on the 25th, 26th of March. We'll have uh I don't know 700 or so people here. You want to come out and see what we actually do here and see what the property actually looks like and how we produce a little bit of food and just most of the stuff that we talk about, it doesn't actually directly affect us because none of that shit happens here. All the last three years that was fucked up for everybody in those cities, it didn't affect us any. Like none of that stuff happened here. And if you want to see what that looks like to live in a free place, come out selfrelianceFestival.com. Check it out and uh, you can get tickets there. Uh, Bear Independence coming out. He'll be speaking here. Tags coming. A bunch of people are coming. But Bear's coming out with Refuge Medical and we've already booked a solid. Um, First day class, there's a, a second class that day also that is fast booking up. So if you want to come out and do a stop, stop the bleed with uh, Refuge Medical, they will be on site uh, teaching that class also on Friday. So you can come out a day ahead of time. And um, other than that, um, bring your kids. Make sure you bring your kids and uh, buy tickets, but bring your kids. Uh, John attaches the little train cars to the back of the Porsche and Cody drives it around the building real slow. Every now and then does a little donut, a little whippy whip, but uh, the kids will enjoy it. It's fun. It's a great time. And if you need any signage or you want some cool plaques or logos or anything made for your business, your family or anything, check out benchmark signs and gifts. Um, they're awesome over there. A uh, hardworking American company. And uh, we watched them start a few years ago from nothing and now they're doing much much bigger stuff um you can find them on instagram you can find them on facebook uh, and just reach out just send them an idea what you want they'll build it up they'll route it out they'll paint it however you need it and it'll show up within a few days at your house awesome company to do business with and uh that's it yeah i think that's all it. right all right